do is they give you those three wide receivers. So they're starting Maurice Douglas today at free safety. Now he gives them a bigger guy at that free safety. Then when they go three wide receivers, that gives them another cornerback in there. The Redskins will kick off Chip Lowmiller. In the direction of Thomas Sanders and Dennis Gentry. And it's going to be Gentry right at the goal line. And he is dangerous. To the 24. Stopped by Clarence Vaughn and Barry Wilbur. Mike Tomczak, the quarterback for the Bears, and he'll be looking at a four man front that has man and manly at the ends. Butts and Grant inside. Coleman Olkowitz having a great year, and Wilbur Marshall. The linebackers, Wilbur and Green, Todd Bowles, and Alvin Walton in the secondary. Tomczak has Suey and Neil Anderson behind him. Thornton was the move man. Anderson hit behind the line of scrimmage by Grant first. And an assist to Manley. The Bears, as mentioned, Tom Zach starting at quarterback. In place of McMahon, Anderson and Suey, the runners. Gentry. And Dennis McKinnon, the wide receivers, and James Thornton is the tight end. Covert back starting at left tackle. Bort Silgenberg, Thayer, and Keith Van Horn up front. Second and 11. Gentry wide left. McKinnon to the right. Now it's Moorhead in motion. Caught by Gentry. First down, Bears. Fine throw, good catch. Stopped by Bowles, a gain of 18. Yeah, it's interesting, Pat. I was looking over on the Bears' sideline, and Greg Landry calls the plays for the Bears now, and Mike Ditka was there in the sideline looking over his shoulder, starting the game as he called the plays. There's Greg Landry right there. And the quarterbacks of the Bears, both McMahon and Mike Tomsack, think that that has really helped them, having a guy who's played 17 years as a quarterback in the league, coaching them and calling plays. Ditka still gives that gum a workout, but he is standing away from the command position. Comes out to McKinnon right at midfield, a pickup of eight. Stopped by Wilbur Marshall. Now Mike Ditka told you that people can't believe that he can be there in the sideline and take it easy. He said he's going to show them he can. Of course, he's down there. His team has the ball. There's no score. He has two cardiologists down there with him. He said to me before the game, you know what it made me realize is that, hey, after all, I may be a tough guy. I'm supposed to be a tough guy, but I'm also mortal. Somewhere you have to throw that iron mic out. Contact on second down. Just does get rid of it. For Gentry and a diving catch by Gentry. Inside the Redskin 10, he blew by Barry Wilburn. Mike Tomczak told us last night, he says, we're going to go deep. He says, we got to take some shots on these guys, and we want to do it early. Here he does. He puts Gentry out there to the left, and the man on Barry Wilburn, who has had problems the last two weeks, and they continue at the beginning of this game. Hey, he had pretty good pass protection there. To throw deep, you have to. You see Rover Marshall coming from the outside, picked up well by Keith Van Horn. First and goal. The Bears are at the Redskin five. And off. Comes back, keeps it. Fake to Anderson, and he almost got in. Wilburn made the stop. He fooled me and most of the Redskins. I tell you, Mike Tomczak did a great job of faking on that. That was a quarterback bootleg where you fake it to the back going on a sweep one way and you keep it and you go the other way. Watch both backs go to the right. Tomczak keeps the ball. All the Redskins go with that and then he's out there one-on-one -on -one getting into the end zone. 
And at the end of the run, he finished it off pretty well. And you don't see many quarterbacks doing that. The biggest thing they do now is that hook slide deal. The official, the play stands. They must have been looking at Tom Sack's play to see if he crossed the plane or the goal line because they didn't give him a touchdown. Last week in the Bears game, the officials gave him a touchdown. Then they went to replay and said the, the ball wasn't over. Clock to 11 seconds. 11. Bob McElwee is the referee. Fifth of it. Mike Ditka behind him. Mike McCaskey on the sideline. Double tight end situation. And now they change all that. Thornton comes out wide right. Straight ahead. No signal as yet. Touchdown now. Yes. Tom back. But you know the Bears thought that they had to get off to a good offensive start. Because they said that gives Mike Tomzak confidence. You can see Tomzak with the confidence now. Their defense plays better when they're ahead. It takes the crowd out of the game, and when they lead at halftime, they're eight no. So all those things the Bears felt were very important to them to get off to this type of lead. Tomzak holds. Kevin Butler at the extra point, and the Bears take the lead. They took the opening kickoff and moved it. 10.52 left in the first quarter. Got it. With the 71 yards passing and the five yards rushing for all of those 76 yards. Including one tough four-yard run. When he rolled to his left, Butler set to kick it off now. Jamie Morris back deep in the middle for the Washington Redskins. One. To the 23, where the Bears get him down. Doug Williams, they call him Pocket because he stays back there and doesn't scramble very much. You'll be looking at this defensive line Harris and Dentley ends, McMichael and Hampton. Rivera, Singletary, and Jim Morrissey. The linebacker. And the secondary, Richardson, Vesty Jackson, the cornerbacks. Timmy Smith. back in place of Calvin Bryant. And Smith, who has such a great Super Bowl, is hit first by Singletary. Talk about an intense. Gentlemen, Mike Singletary. Here are the Washington offensive workers. Doug Williams, the quarterback, Timmy Smith, Art Monk, Gary Clark, Craig McEwen, the H-back, and Donnie Warren. In spite of spending the night in the hospital with uh, flu, he is back and playing with Shea McKenzie, Bostic, Thielman, and May up front. Keith Griffin now on second and long. They hand off to Griffin. Griffin would be assuming the role that Kelvin Bryant did have before he started playing regularly. Stopped by Morrissey. Gain of three. I think that's going to really hurt the Redskins going into this game. You know, Kelvin Bryant, Joe Gibbs always wanted to save him just for passing. And then he wanted to run and he wanted to start. So they finally started him. The thing that really scared him with the fact that he'd get hurt and not have the fight. Well, he did get hurt. Now he's not even on the active roster. Here's Durison, the safety man, up in the line alongside Singletary. Uh, both of them back out. Williams up to the middle of Gary Clark. First down, Richmond. Hit by David Tate with a gain of 18. That's one thing the Bears do more and more on defense. Look, they got them all packed in there. Now, they used to always show that 
and then come. Now they get up there and they back out. They bring Dewerson out, they bring Singletary out, and just rush four. The Redskins right now, one of the best offensive lines in football, really protected Doug Williams well. And you watch Keith Griffin gets an assist because he picked up Hampton and really put a hit on it. Here's Williams. And pocket goes to Clark. Jackson on the coverage the Steelers ahead of Philadelphia Chiefs over Cincinnati all early Lions Tampa Bay also three nothing second and ten here at RFK Stadium the book on Doug Williams coming in Redskin ball their own 47 the Bears leading seven nothing 8.27 left first quarter. That's Art Monk in motion. Richardson goes with him. Williams chased by Hampton out of the pocket. And I guess, although no indication as yet as to whether he was in bounds or not, Clark was the receiver and evidently he was. Bestie Jackson. You know what? Watch where Gary Clark came from. Here's Gary Clark. He's a tight end. You expect him out someplace. Boom, he comes up here and runs the out to here. First of all, you have to find the guy, and then you got to cover him. But who would ever think that Gary Clark would line up as a tight end? Good outside release. Boom, good move. Drive his guy up. Come back a little to the ball. First and ten Redskins at the Bear 41. Williams semi sprint out. Come on. And that's good. Inbounds covered by Richardson. And another Redskin first down. Well, that was the thing the Bears and Pittsburgh were worried about is Doug Williams throwing and these three wide receivers. He starts working at Gary Clark. Then he goes to an art punk. And remember, still has the guy, Ricky Sanders, who's caught more than any of them that he hasn't thrown to yet. We were talking with Doug Williams yesterday. He said, if we can get some time, if we can just block him, we can get some things done. Carol Bello is in front of Timmy Smith in the Redskin backfield. That's Mark. Here comes the counterplay. Trying to get to the outside, got to about the 29, a pickup of one. Dick Shapura made the stop along with Morrissey. One thing that the, that the Bears can do with, with guys like Dent and Al Harris, they can they can adjust with those guys as defensive ends, and they can put them down as rush men, and then they can stand them up as linebackers, bring them in and drop them off. But I tell you, this 95 right there, when he's rushing, a pure pass rusher, I think he's the best in the National Football League, the best pure pass rusher there is. And when he gets going, he can play at about four or five levels. That fifth level, you can't block him. McEwen was the move man. Monk was in the backfield. Williams has the pass picked off by Vesti Jackson in the end zone. And Jackson for the Bears gets it out to their 25 before he is stopped by McEwen. 27 yards on the run back. And there's Richard Depp, and he was hanging on Doug Williams as he throws the ball. Watch him. Jim Lachey, one of the best tackles. Depp, one of the best pass rushers. Watch, he gets Williams just as he's throwing up around the head, neck, and shoulders. And a big part of that interception could go to Richard Depp. Doug Williams got up pointing to the official saying this was unnecessary. 
Well, you, I, I think what he was saying is that he clubbed him in the head. See, you can go after him right there. You see, he hit him in the head. That's what Doug was complaining about. You can't hit him in the head. But the Bears have the ball. Anderson is put out wide right this time. Morris goes in motion. Tomczak going for Anderson. Broken up at the last minute by Alvin Walton. Anderson had gotten a step on Walton. The ball just didn't quite get there. Well, Neil Anderson is, of course, is a back. They put him out here as a wide receiver. This is one of the things Mike Bonsack says. This is one of the ways we want to go deep. Get Walton out there isolated on Neil Anderson outside. Anderson beats Walton. Bonsack doesn't do his part of the deal because he throws it short. Neil Anderson. Ron Morris now is put wide to the right. Wendell Davis, the rookie from LSU to the left. That's Warhead moving around. And that's Thayer who jumped out of there too soon. He was pulling to the left. Tom Thayer was the right guard. He knew he had to get going. They were probably going to run a squeal over the left, left side. 57 offense. Second down. They were probably running a sweep to the left side. And old Tom Thayer, the right guard, had to get out there to that left side. He just left the farm a little early. That you wouldn't expect. The Bears being the least penalized team in the NFL. Well, that's in the last four games. Thomas Sanders and Matt Suri now. Backs and Cap Bozo is the up back and he moves. Just activated. Hand off to Sanders. He's hit behind the line of scrimmage by Charles Mann. Dexter Manley with an assist. Yeah, it's funny, Pat, how the, the feeling in this stadium and these two teams, it really has a playoff feeling about it. I think that's one of the reasons, in fact, like Ditka said, that's one of my favorite places to play, to see, and to coach. And that's Five one of the reasons he came back. Foul, 71, defense. That is not an automatic first down. Second down. Of course, you know the other thing, since the Bears have gone to the Super Bowl, they haven't won a playoff game since. And the team that has knocked them out of the playoffs both times have been these Redskins. And there's a score of the Super Bowl when the Bears won and the score of the game the Redskins knocked them out of on a roof right by their practice field. Mike Dixon says, I've been seeing that every day for two years. How can I not come to this game? Anderson is back with Suey and this is Moorhead in motion. And Tom's back, back to throw it. Hit by Manley. The went around Covert. Jim Covert came back last week and he played about half the game. Now he's getting a start. You see him there in the right of the screen. He starts off good pass protection. Manley, boom, just pops into him. And then Rapp takes that outside and goes around him for the sack. I think one thing, good defensive ends fire up other ones. I think you saw Richard Dent get a big play. Now Manley says, hey, this is my home place. Third down and 24. Tomczak out of the spread formation. Gets it going deep. It is incomplete. Intended for... Glenn Kozlowski. Incomplete Wilburn again on the cover. Now, Barry Wilburn a year ago was having an all-pro year. This year, he held out. Then he came back. Then he got injured. And then this is his third game back. Last year, it seemed like very few teams would throw on Wilburn. Now, these last three weeks, everyone's game plan is to throw on Barry Wilburn. Ryan Wagner back to punt for the Bears, standing about five yards deep in his own end zone. Gary Clark back returning punts. Steve Gage is back. 
back there with it. Not a good punt. Watch. Struggling at the bare 40. Redskins will take it over in good shape. 5.08 left to play in the first quarter here at RFK Stadium. 7-0 Chicago. At RFK Stadium in Washington. That's the Bears practice facility. Up in Lake Forest, Illinois, north of the Loop in Chicago. That's what John Madden was talking about just a minute ago. That first score, of course, is their Super Bowl. Mike Ditka said for a year he saw that every day. The next score is the 1327. That was the two years ago when the Redskins knocked them out. And if you wanted to, they could add one here because that was last year. And they haven't forgotten. First and ten Redskins, Monk in motion. Williams to throw it. Maybe. Wait. Timmy Smith. The intended receiver. Doug Williams under heavy pressure from the Bears again. You know, Doug Williams was saying yesterday that, that you always look at that Bear defense and say that you can get some mismatches with our receivers against their corners. He said, but a good pass rush or good pressure will take mismatches away. And that's a guy he has to worry about, that big Hampton coming straight up the middle on him. With McMichael next to him. Single carry on a blitz. Williams had to hurry again, and he threw in the direction of Ricky Sanders. They're yeah, making the Bears him. putting the heat on. They're making him throw when he doesn't want to, but you can look at that Redskin wide receiver trio, or Ricky Sanders has caught the most, Art Monk and Gary Clark. They're the only NFL team to have three wide receivers with more than 30 receptions. But look just that group who really plays most of the time, how productive they are in receptions, yardage, and touchdowns. They have changed from a running team to a passing team, and these guys are the big part of it. Third and ten. Singletary again steps up, and again he starts at Williams, who gets it away, almost picked off. McMichael hit Williams just as he let it go. Al Harris had a shot at it. He just got too anxious. McMichael, and the pressure again came right up the middle. And they, that's what happened. This Bear defense has taken over this series. The Redskins had great position, great field position, but the offensive line just can't get this front block. They're getting a push up the, mid, the, the middle. There's McMichael right there. Doug Williams trying to get rid of the ball. Almost throws an interception to Al Harris. But the Bear defensive line is controlling this game right now. And this is Greg Coleman back to punt. Washington, Dennis McKinnon is back. He this is a good kick. It must have gotten into the end zone, as you can see by the indication for the official from the official who's right there, just barely. And so they'll bring it back to the 20 with 425 left to play first quarter. The Bears lead it by a touchdown. No doubt about it. Watch Clarence Vaughn, Pat. He's the guy covering that punt. Now what happens is the ball is going into the end zone. You see, he goes into the end zone. Then as he goes to throw it back, watch the ball lands up right on the goal line. So that's why they give it, say it goes back to the 20. Now look, when they recovered, it was outside. But he was in the end zone when he touched it. And then in throwing it back, it hit the goal line. So it's first and 10 Chicago. They're at their own 20 with 425 left to play in the first quarter. Comes back. Tisui. No game. Olkowitz and Coleman. Well, there's a little difference. They started in the same place and had two completely opposite results. And again, the big difference is. They, they, they tried to throw some deep ones, both series. The first time, Tom Sack hit it with Gentry. The next time, he didn't hit the big one. I said no game. Suey carved 
something out of that and got five yards. So it's second and five. Redskins go quick. This is Anderson. And Anderson gets a bear first down. For an NFL update right now, let's go back to New York, and here is Brent Musburger. That the Pittsburgh Steelers added this touchdown to that earlier field goal. The lips off the end around, throwing to Hodge, and it is 10 to nothing in that one. Cincinnati leading Kansas City 7-3, but the Chiefs are now driving. Back to Pat and John. 7-0 Brent at RFK Stadium. The Bears over the Redskins. First down for Chicago at their own 31. Top running outside quickly to Neil Anderson. And Anderson struggles up close to the 40. Stopped by Alvin Walton. And Todd Bowles. Yeah, one of the things, watch Charles Mann, number 71. He's a defensive end most of the time. This year, he started doing some other things. Now he lines up as a nose tackle. That's where he was that time. But I'll tell you, Jay Hilgenberg was the guy you were blocking, that you saw blocking him. He did a heck of a job on man. You couldn't even see Hilgenberg. He was kind of blotted out. But that's the way a center should pass for 10. Second and one. McKenna moves in motion. Contact up to Thornton. And the tight end stopped by Monty Coleman, but got 11 yards and another bear first down in redskin territory. That guy has a set of arms. You know, last week, he was wearing a mask, Pat. You know, one of those, those masks over the eyes, and he dropped the pass, and I was watching. I said, how can a guy wear a mask? And it was tinted. It was blue tinted. And I said, you can't see the ball going out for a pass. Usually the linemen wear it. Well, anyway, Mike Dicta saw the same thing and said, hey, take that mask off, will you? He did, and he caught the ball. And he started. Anderson. He is quick. Stopped by Walton and Bowles, but he gained seven. Gary Clark. I'll tell you, for a wide receiver, this guy's one of the tough guys. You know, you always think of defensive guys and big old linemen and nose tackles be a tough guy. This is a little guy who is a wide receiver who is really a tough guy. Anytime you stand near your wide receiver, you spit in your hand and just leave it there. I'll guarantee you you're tough. Second, second and four. Tom Zach ducks to the right side himself. No game. Monty Coleman and Charles Mann on the tackle again. They had Manley. Again, Manley was lined up on the left side. Interesting note, and I don't know why. I wish I could tell you more about this, but play has been stopped in this Green Bay-Indianapolis game because of turkeys on the field. I don't know what kind of turkeys. Probably their last celebration before Thanksgiving. They know they're going to get it, so they want to go watch a football game. I'll guarantee you that's a first. <laughs> Here's Tom Zach. Hit just as he let it go, and the pass is picked off by Okowitz. Flag on the play. And a scuffle between Manley and the quarterback. And there was a flag there, Pat, right at the quarterback, right where he threw it. The pass was intercepted by Okowitz. But let's check out the call. The rush was made by Manley, the throw by Tomsack, the penalty right at Tomsack's feet. Personal foul, face mask, defense. Five yards, automatic first down. Okay, here's Dexter Manley. He's going to come on the rush. And he is the guy who hits Tomsack just as he throws it. Now, they didn't say who the penalty's on. There's the rush right there. Yep, it's on Manley. Has to be. He not only got the, the pass rush, but he grabbed the face mask. Look at Tomsack. First, he points to the referee, and then he punches Manley. And now Van Horn arrives. You know, Manley 
last week was the guy who was accused of spitting on Jim Dombrowski of the New Orleans Saints and that caused Dombrowski a 15 yard penalty knocked him out of field goal range five yards first down and Manley said that uh, he did not do that and uh, that he just sneezed it was an allergy well I think what happened I think right after the game he said he did and then someone probably said hey you can't do that so then he said he sneezed you'll be glad to know that in Indianapolis or in Green Bay the turkey has been removed and the score is tied 3-3 three, three. there was only one turkey that's what it said I'd let that thing get away with Thanksgiving I mean that thing ought to live through this Thanksgiving was that much stir that's nothing the passer 15 yards roughing the passer is called against the Redskins and a 15 yard penalty is called before they ever ran the play well didn't they already mark it off for the face mask I thought so so they must have given him five yards that's what Joe Gibbs is saying it's the same play they gave him five yards for the face mask and then they give him 15 for roughing he's talking about a guy who's going crazy Joe Gibbs is going to go crazy on that one he's had about enough of these officials as it is so it's first down Bears at the Redskins 29 a handoff a reverse coming to McKinnon a flag on the play and it's going to be called again Manley's involved and Tom Zach was holding Manley that's what this is going to be about let's get even time I'll tell you Tom Zach is a quarterback in the in the body of a middle linebacker and I think one thing you like a guy to have fight in it I always respect that when you take a guy in a glamour position and have a tough guy, and Tom Sack is that type of guy. Let's see what happened here with Tom Sack. Watch number 18, the quarterback now. The reverse coming to McKinnon. Well, it's a reverse. He hands off, and then Anderson is going to hand off again to McKinnon right there. Tom Sack is up on top. He went to block Manley, got down on the ground, and grabbed his leg. Richard Redskin is Monty Coleman, the linebacker, and the discussion continues. This is weird. I mean, we got turkeys stopping a game in one place, and we got quarterbacks blocking and holding in another place. 18 offense, first down. Well, the officials haven't marked the penalty off yet. There they go now. This is confusing because they didn't mark the penalty off. The flags are still down on the field. Well, you know, last year before the playoff game in Chicago, one of the things that said was that Mike Ditka said that Dexter Manley had the IQ of a grapefruit. And today, Manley's been involved in everything so far, although they say he's been quiet all week. I'll tell you one thing about Manley. Whatever you think of him, he does cause a stir. I mean, it's one way or another. It's either getting the crowd fired up, getting in a shouting match with the other coach, sacking the quarterback, getting blocked, having penalties against you, whatever. Well, in any case, that's the end of the first quarter with the score of the Bears 7, the Redskins nothing. RFK Stadium after a riotous first quarter. The Bears lead 7-0. The Bears have the ball at the Redskin 40. And it's first and 10. First and 20, I beg your pardon. Tom Zack back to throw. Oh, this is Suey, and he gets down inside the 30. Daryl Green stopped him. The interesting thing on that play, and you'll see it here, here's Dexter Manley. He has to cover Matt Suey on that play. Watch him. He starts out as a rush. He sees Suey go out, and he says, the heck with the rush. Let me see if I can help on coverage. They just throw it over Dexter's head, 
And there again he is. Again, he's at the end of the play. This guy, Dexter Manley, has been all over this field for whatever reason. Second and ten. Just inside the Redskin 30 for the Bears. Anderson. Anderson close to a first down, close to about the 20. Waltman Bowles again made the stop. He's about a yard short. A gain of nine by Neil Anderson. This guy's done an outstanding job. I mean, to be a number one draft choice is always tough. To come in and have to play behind Walter Payton, maybe the greatest running back who ever played the game is difficult. And then to have to take his place, be the guy that replaced Walter Payton. And I'll tell you, he's, he's a guy who has done that. I mean, he's come in, he's done a good job on the football field, and he's never got caught up in that whole thing. Third and one, and Mann moves over in front of the center again, and Manley goes to the left defensive end spot. The handoff is to Anderson, and he's close. Bowles made the hit that knocked him backwards, but he got a couple, and I think a bear first down, and he did. Hey, I still think that Jay Hilgenberg is one of the best centers in the league. He's right there. Watch the block that he makes on man. He's going to fire into him right there. You see right in the middle of the screen. Get him going to the left. Anderson sees that. See Hilgenberg stay with his block. Hilgenberg stays with his block, and Anderson can cut right off it. First and 10. Bears at the Redskin 18. Second quarter. Bears leading it already 7 to nothing. And Anderson left side. Stopped by Wilbur Marshall and Daryl Grant for a gain of one. Yeah, right now, Pat, I, I think you can take most football games and put it in the trench area and say that whoever wins the trenches will probably win the game. And I think this is the epitome of that type of game. I think so far, the bare line, both their offensive line against the Redskins' defensive line, and their defensive line against the offensive line of the Redskins, they are winning both of those battles. Second and nine from the 17. Handoff is to Sui. And he's to about the 16. And again, a, a little engagement takes place downfield. Nate Butts made the stop. That was Van Horn and one of the Redskins defensive backs, Alvin Walton. There's another scrappy guy, that Alvin Walton, and anytime Alvin Walton is like six foot, and you take on Keith Van Horn, he's six foot six. You got to have some rocks in your pockets, and this guy Walton has some rocks in his pocket. And when he hits you, you go backwards. This is Dennis Gentry. This is downfield, same play. But you know, I'm sure that when the Bears came in here, they said, "Hey." We're going on the road. We're a tough team. Don't be intimidated at RFK. They try and show they're not. Third and seven Redskins all out blitz. The pass comes back a remarkable job to get rid of the ball and completes it to Wendell Davis inside the five. Dennis Woodbury on the coverage. You know, it looked like Wendell Davis could have gotten up and run in with that ball. I don't think anyone touched him. Let's watch the pass protection here. You know, again, the, the, the Bear offensive line has won this battle early. They didn't do a good job that time. They didn't block Monty Coleman. He came free from one side. Manley came from the back side. And Tomzak just had to get rid of it. Heck of a throw by Tomzak. Timeout, Redskin. 10-37 remain in the first half. And it's been a hectic first half. The Bears lead the skin 7 up At RFK Stadium in Washington. Bears have it first down at the Redskin 3. Tomzak is 7 out of 9. For 112 yards. This drive has taken 12 plays. And the Bears have kept the ball 8 minutes and 48 seconds. And when they control the clock. They usually win. Most teams do, as a matter of fact, don't they? Suey and Anderson. And Suey, touchdown. Jim McMahon over on the 
sideline cheering. I'll tell you what he should be cheering is the middle of that line. Jay Hilgenberg, Mark Quartz on the left side, Tom Thayer on the right side. They have really been doing a job. They've been doing a job against the middle of this Redskin defense. Mike Dick, he said, he told you he's going to take it easy. Yeah. He said, they don't think I can. Early in the game, he was standing up. Now he's back sitting on the bench. The extra point by Butler is good. And with 10.34 left in the first half, the Bears are up 14 nothing. Scoring drive, they kept it almost nine minutes. And they lead 14 nothing. Butler's kickoff goes to Jamie Morris at the seven. Morris down at about the 25 for the Redskins will take over. 19 yard return. Old Dexter's there telling Daryl Grant what he's doing, and now they're rushing. But I think the problem is, I think they're getting pretty good pressure from Manley's side. And I think it's that, that inside that the Bears are, are handling well. Carabello splits out wide to the right this time. Much wide left along with Clark. Right side stopped by single Terry. Game three. Second down, about seven. Redskins at their own 29, trailing 14 nothing to the Chicago Bears. Keith Griffin is now the lone setback. Redskins, that's Ricky Sanders on the move. Williams over the head of Sanders. I'll tell you one thing. In the first half of this of this game, I think that the Redskins have fallen into the trap that Joe Gibbs didn't want to. But you think about that defense. They do so many things. They've fallen into the trap of going to the pass all the time. But maybe they have to because they've run only four times so far for seven yards. So maybe it's the type of thing, well, we've tried, we can't get anything. Maybe it's the type of thing we don't have Calvin Bryant. But I think it's something they have to stay with. When you get in a situation like this where you almost have to throw it, then you've got to get a block. And they just didn't do it. Morrissey came from the outside and put the heat on Doug Williams. Hey, watch Dan Hampton there. He's a tackle. Now, this is what a tackle does in a stunt. You see, he starts inside, fake, then comes to the inside. Morrissey comes to the outside. Hampton follows Morrissey. No one blocked Morrissey, so he gets to Williams before Hampton does, who was on the stunt with Dent. So Greg Coleman goes back to punt for the Redskins. Dennis McKinnon, number 85 for the Bears, back deep to receive it. There's a try to set up a punt. Coleman. As they retreated, but Coleman under so much pressure he couldn't get rid of it. Maurice Douglas was there in a hurry. Maurice Douglas came from the Bears' left side from the right side of Coleman. It'll be as Coleman looks at the right side. Watch him on the top of the screen there. No one blocks Douglas until he gets to Coleman. By the time the fullback, Terry Orr, blocks him, he's already on Coleman. Watch him. He's going to come in there. Coleman looks like he was already to send. It wasn't a fake or anything. He was ready just to let it go. And there was Maurice Douglas right on him. There's a lot of this today. After the play, guys going after it. I think I don't know if that's intensity or rivalry or fired up or whatever. We have a lot of it in this game. Here comes a fake double reverse. Ron Morris wound up with it. It looked like he might have getting been getting ready to throw it off the fake double reverse. Alvin Walton, however, was not fooled by any of it. 
the loss on the play. You know, the, the offensive game plan of the Bears was made up before Mike Ditka got there. And, and I think just watching the Bears, the things they're doing, a lot of credit here offensively has to go to this guy in the middle there, Greg Landry. He's calling the play, but so far, I think he's calling an excellent game. Second and 11, Sanders and Muster are in the backfield behind Tom Zach, and the handoff is to Sanders. Hit first by Walton, and cut down after a pickup of three yards. Wilbur Marshall with the assist. Under how Wilbur Marshall feels, you know, with all his buddies that uh, haven't played for the Bears, for so many years, been in the Super Bowl with him, been an all-pro player with him, and then have to come here, he says, look at you, I'm, they're still my friends. You know, I've been through a lot with those guys, and they know me, and they know how I play, and I'm going to play as hard against them as I do against anybody else. We were friends before, and we're still friends after. Third and eight. Tom Zach from the spread. Pulls it down, fires end zone, incomplete. He had his feet out of the end zone. McKinnon came up with it, but his feet were out of the end zone. I tell you, that, that was a heck of a throw, though, by Mike Thompson, because he, he pumped one way, looked, and then came back and found, found McKinnon there on the end zone. His foot was on the back line, but what's Thompson? He's looking, looking, good protection. Look, he pumped all the way to the left, brought all the defense over, and then fired it back in there to McKinnon. Now, that's a touchdown, except McKinnon's foot was on the back line, they said. Here's Butler. Comes back holding. Butler hits it from 32 yards away, and it's 17-0 now. The Bears over the Redskins, 7 with 53 left in the first half. Team, the Washington Redskins nothing with 7.53 left to play in the first half. Devin Butler hits 32 yards out with his field goal to increase the Bears margin. Mark Mosley on the right, the Redskins place kicker who is so successful and so good, and the king next to him is Richard Petty. This is going to be Keith Griffin. Smith. And let's watch this throw again. Here's Dennis McKinnon back here. Now, it looks like his feet are okay. I mean, the ball right now is right over the end zone. You can see the ball coming in right now. Right now, he has it. He has the ball. Both feet are up in the air. Now, it looks like to me that that's okay. The only thing I can think of is maybe before you can see the divot there in the white. Maybe the official said he went out and he can't come back in. But I think he caught that in the end zone for a touchdown. Here's Doug Williams outside the Monk. Pick up uh, seven yards. Tackled by Mike Richardson. 17 nothing. The Bears in control of things. Today, what it seems like is in control is the Bear defense when you look the Redskins have only rushed for four yards, and they've thrown for like eight or nine times for 30 yards, 32 yards. There's Kelvin Bryant there, who is not on the active roster today, he injured his knee. He's talking to Daryl Green. Sanders flipped to the left. They hit. Demars, Demars hammers for a Redskin first down. Up to the 42, a pickup of 10. We're at RFK Stadium in Washington. Matt Summerall, John Madden. The day started with a downpour. And then about an hour before the game began, it stopped. Just to summarize, Mike Ditka is on the Bears sideline. He is relaxing, not taking part in the coaching procedures. Mike Tomczak, his starting quarterback, is 7 out of 10, 112 yards. 39 yards rushing for the Bears, and the Redskins not able to manufacture much. First and 10. Williams on first down to throw it. Under pressure. Almost picked off. Intended for Morris out of the backfield. Singletary got the hand on it. And Steve, Steve McMichael.
Michael. Yeah, Steve McMichael got the hand on Williams again. Say, Williams is throwing, but watch coming right up the middle. McMichael's down. I watch he steps up just as he throws again. It seems like every time Williams throws, there's a guy in a dark jersey hanging on him. Watch McMichael there. You see, they never let Williams step up. They never let him throw when he wants to. They never let him follow through. They just pack away at him all day. Morris again the setback. Williams out to Clark. Hit by Vesty Jackson after a gain of seven. Williams, everything he has thrown so far has been hurried in some fashion. That's the thing. A, a, a pass rush gets a lot more, you know, in addition to sacks. And we always think of the sacks, but they can hurry the quarterback, make him throw when he doesn't want to. They can hit him right as he throws it and knock him down. They can, they can knock the ball up in the air. They can cause a lot of havoc without really getting sacked. Third down and three. Four receivers this time for the Redskins. said where did he come from well it was Joe Gibbs that said that Joe Gibbs says this guy is a heck of a player this David Tate he's only a rookie 177 pounds from Colorado he said that guy can really play I'm telling you and then we talked to Vince Tobin last night he said well Tate's not going to start we're going to start Maurice Douglas because he's a bigger guy but Tate does have a good feel for that center field a good feel for reacting to the ball that's Dennis McKinnon back deep. And Greg Coleman to put it. We'll get this one off. And it's a good one. McKinnon lets it go. And it goes into the end zone. Wise choice. As it turns out. 51-yard punt by Coleman. The Bears will take over at their own 20. Coach Mike Ditka and that is his doctor Dr. Jake Alexander the cardiologist who treated him and is saying stay calm remember what the score is and he's giving him points you see he's figured one finger two finger like here's the three things you have to do no salt no sugar no cholesterol here's Tomzak gets it outside incomplete intended for Neil Anderson you know the when I was talking to Mike Ditka before the game, he said one of the things that you just mentioned that I have to cut out is salt. He said, I, heck, I haven't eaten salt in 15 years. Haven't used it. Well, you don't know. I mean, a lot of times it's not the salt that you put on, but it's salt other people put in stuff before you even get it. Thank goodness there's no salt in that gum. I'll tell you, he's given that thing a good workout today. If there ever was, it's gone now. I'd hate to be a hack. I'd hate to be a pack of gum when Ditka walked in the store. Here's a handoff to Anderson from Tomzak. Outside the 25, a pickup of seven, stopped by Mel Kaufman. Now this is a bear type of game. I mean, this is the the type of thing that they do. This is a bear type of game when a running back walks back to the huddle and you have a divot sticking out of your right eye. Man, that's football. Remember the old days, Pat? Yeah. It'd be like that. I mean, guys would get some dirt and some mud and stuff hanging on them. That type of game. But this is bear football in that they get ahead, then their offense says to the defense, okay, now it's your game. We won't foul it up for you. You win it. is the man who goes in motion this time and Tom Zack operating out of the split formation has some time he gets it to Gentry complete gain of six what a heck of a throw Daryl Green made the stop Gentry right in the middle of the pack well here's the reason that he's getting some time watch again the middle of the line you see Marcus Cook is rushing there Steve Hamilton is rushing but they do a good job they come on a stunt, they stop Manley from getting up the middle, and they give Tomsack time to stand back there and find Gentry. 
I think that middle against man and against all the stunts have been doing an excellent job. Their first down. Hand off to Brad Muster. Who gets out to the 35. Picked up two. Wilbur Marshall and Dexter Manley. Tripped him. 17-0. The Bears lead the Redskins. Their record is 8-2. The Redskins 6-4. And, and I think a lot of it and this offensive line is because of this guy Jay Hildenberg. I think he's one of the best in the league and, and you know he comes from that center. I mean he said his family the way they they play catch is they play catch between their legs. Just stand there in the center, call out that play, look at it, get those arms moving. For Gentry, incomplete with a flag on the play covered by Barry Wilburn. Wilbur knows the two bad. He had great coverage. He was running stride for stride. And just before the ball got there, he had contact with him. He looked like he tried to get away from the contact, but then it went back in. Defense, first down. 30 yard penalty. Watch him. He almost grabs him at the end of this. Well, he really has pretty good position. He doesn't have to. I think he was putting up his hand, and he thought that Gentry had the ball. And he just got those two hands up there prematurely. But really, the coverage wasn't that bad. I mean, he wasn't faked or anything. He, he was running with them. And he just got his hands up to tackle before the ball got there. Wendell Davis is split wide to the left this time. McKinnon is to the right. First down there. Comes back to throw it on the first. Throws to Davis through his hand. Pass almost picked off and then dropped. At the last second, Barry Wilbur juggled it, had a chance, went right through Davis's hands. And Tom Zach really fired that one. I tell you, that's that's been the problem here with these Redskins all year is that turnover things. They've they've given up too many, and their defense just can't get them. In fact, they were thinking of not starting Todd Bowles, going to Steve Gage because they felt they needed someone back there that could come up with some more interceptions. They don't get a lot, and then when they do get their shots, they just can't come up with them. It brings up second and ten. Comes back, gets to Anderson on the way. Anderson to about the 30, picked up six. Alvin Walton on the stop. One of the officials put a hat on the field, not a flag. I think that was a mistake. Didn't mean to do it. There's Greg Landry again who calls the plays. He makes up the game plan. He works all week with the quarterbacks as a quarterback coach. And then he calls each play. They lost one game to New England a couple of weeks ago. And Greg Landry told the quarterbacks after that game, he said, look, he said, I stunk. I called a, a bad game. And I have to reevaluate what I'm doing. And, and I'll do better. He called them all together right after the game and said just exactly what you repeated. Hey, my fault, guys. I didn't do a good job. Two minutes remain, first half. Hey, Fighting Irish, of course, unbeaten at 9-0 and and looking toward their first national championship since 1977. Then in game two, it's the game for the Big 8 title. Seventh-ranked Nebraska takes on arch rival and number eight-ranked Oklahoma. It's a classic doubleheader next Saturday here on CBS. Anderson moves back by Tom Zach. It's third and four. Gentry in motion. Here comes the Redskins blitz again. McKinnon. Tom Zach read it perfectly. And Daryl Green was on McKinnon. McKinnon was saying last night, I hope Daryl Green covers me. Every other time we play him, Daryl Green would always call, cover Willie Gall. And they said that he covers the best guy. And that kind of makes the other guys feel a little inferior. And he said, today I hope Daryl Green covers me because then that means they think I'm good. That time, Daryl Green did try and cover him, and Dennis McKinnon beat him. In fact, he's coming out here on him now. First and 10 at the 12 for the Bears. Trying to get more. Anderson to about the 9 for a pickup of 3. Neil Okowitz and Alvin Walton on the stop. A minute 15 left. Timeout, Bears. There at the 9. 
waved the clock. He said to keep the clock running that Anderson didn't get it out of bounds. Pretty tough to be competitive when you're penalized more yards than you've gained. And that's what's happened to Joe Gibbs Redskins this far, thus far in the first half. Clock is running. Two timeouts left for both teams. Third and six. Brian is scrimmage. The eight. The Redskins eight. Anderson and there's not much there. Daryl Grant stopped him and now they'll probably take another one. Another timeout. Well just to kick the field goal because I think what they're doing I don't think this is conservative as much as a type of play when you have a good defense who has control of the game. When you have that type, you don't do anything stupid. You take advantage of everything your defense gets for you. And now after they let the clock run down. The Bears take a timeout. They have one left. Kevin Butler out to try the field goal. Don't forget, coming up, of course, at the half, the NFL today with Brent, Irv, and Dick. Scores and highlights. And Tony Casillas, the Atlanta Falcons nose tackle, talks about tackling stress. And that's not a player. Well, you know, he had the stress, Tony Casillas, and he had to leave camp and left football. And we talk about in this game, we have a quarterback, Mike Tomsack, who had a lot of stress as a backup quarterback and being in the shadow of Jim McMahon, getting along with Mike Ditka. He's been seeing a psychologist. And he said he just always felt like he had a monkey on his back. That every time he played, he had to get the monkey off his back. And it's been a very difficult. So then you have Mike Ditka, who's been in the hospital. This is a very stressful situation. Kevin Butler, stressful before the game because somebody stole his shoes. Those are new shoes. He said, I just made them this morning. And he just made that field goal. Jim McMahon. Over on the sidelines, said he was going to take care of the water supply during timeouts for his Bears. And they lead 20 to nothing at the half. Jim McMahon could very well be the guy that stole Kevin Butler's shoe. Could be. He would do that type of thing. But they is probably nothing worse for a kicker than have to play in a big game like today and someone steals your shoes. It's like stealing your wedge out of your <laughs> golf bag, your favorite wedge. Nevertheless, he's two for two and has made two extra points, and it's 20 to nothing. At the half, the Bears over the Redskins. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Citizen. No other watch expresses time more beautifully. Levi's 505 and 506 jeans. And by Toyota. There's quality. Who could ask for anything more? For CBS Sports, I'm Leslie Visser. You know, Brett, I think when he came out of the University of Oklahoma, he probably thought he'd just pick it up right where he left off in his college career, and he finds out it's not that easy in the pros for a rookie, even though, you know, you're a big number one choice. Well, Dick, there are a lot of pressures. We all know that, you know, but I think one thing that happens to the young players coming in is that they've been successful their entire athletic career. Then they get to the pros and find things slipping away because they're not reaching their expectations. It's very difficult for them to handle. Mm, Irvin Dick, let's send everybody back to the stadium and the game they're enjoying. Halftime at RFK, 20 nothing Bears over the Redskins. And CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League will continue after this message and a word from your local state. Announcing the Holiday Inn Make the Super Call game. Come to Holiday Inn, get a game card. Now, Super Bowl 18. Four minutes to go. Raiders face a fourth and goal. You call it. Scratch off the right play, and you win. Thousands of prizes. Even a trip to the Super Bowl. Everybody's getting into it. Only at America's favorite hotel. For reservations, make the Super Bowl. What I would like you to do, Mr. Customer, Miss, Ms. Customer, is kind of ask yourself, do I make one-minute phone calls? Most of the time, the answer is no. Think about when you see a comparison that states a time. Look at that chart and say, are these the calls that I make with this length of time on that particular day of the week? Generally speaking, the longer the call, 
the lesser the cost differential between AT&T and any of its competitors. What are the three biggest lies in the world? Smoking is relaxing. Smoking is glamorous. And lung cancer won't happen to me. This year, 125,000 Americans learned the truth about smoking when they were diagnosed with lung cancer. November 17th is the great American smoke out. Quit for the day or quit for life, but do it. Because this is a pack of lies. Then we'll go out, Julie. There are hungry people in our community. They have no choice. They have no food. On November 19th, put what you can in this bag. Then leave it at your door. The Boy Scouts will take it from there. You'll help the hungry like Julie and her mom, who are sick of going out to eat. November 19th, scouting for food. They're hungry for your help. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Chrysler. Chrysler believes a luxury car should be a great driving car. At Chrysler, we're driving to be the best. For genuine draft, cold filtered draft taste, it's as real as it gets. Miller Brewing is the exclusive beer sponsor of today's telecast. And by UPS, we deliver to every address in the U.S. and to 41 countries worldwide. Back at RFK Stadium, the halftime score, the Bears have dominated 20 to nothing over the Redskins at the half. And just to give you an indication of what we might expect the last time against the Giants in 1987, the Redskins were down 16 to nothing and came back to win it. Today they're down 20 to nothing. But the Bears in 1988 this season when they lead at the halftime they are 8 and 0 and more importantly I think John Madden is the fact that they kept the ball the Bears have 21 minutes and 22 seconds to eight and a half minutes 838 to be exact for the Redskins Mike Ditka over there and I think the reason for that time of possession and also the reason that Mike Ditka is so relaxed Otis Wilson sitting there next to him helping him relax is the fact that they've controlled the line of scrimmage on both sides when they have the ball they've controlled the, uh, the line of scrimmage when the Redskins have the ball their defense has controlled the line of scrimmage Kevin Butler's kicked off the Jamie Morris they fake the reverse and it worked Lorenzo Smith made the stop but a 35 yard return by Jamie Morris. I'm sure that, that was something that they talked about at halftime and said, look, we're going to get the kick. Let's make something happen. Look at that hole there. If Jamie Morris were going to hand off on a reverse, it would have been a dumb handoff. That hole was so big that you could have driven a couple of trains through it. And Jamie Morris is going to start at running back here in the second half for the Redskins. Art Monk goes in motion. Morris on the counterplay gets the carry and hit by Singletary. I don't think there's anyone, if you watch him week after week, there's no one that fills that hole with more authority than this guy. Well, you know, and he has such presence in there. He's right in the middle of the line. He's in the middle of everything. He makes all the adjustments, all the calls. The Bear defense tries to keep blockers off him. And you see how they do that? Then he can just read slide right down the line of scrimmage and when that when that guy comes into the hole he could just be square and whack on the low down. Second down. Here's Doug Williams back to throw it and this time he has time. Pass is almost picked off. Juggled first of all by Vesty Jackson and Morris he came up with it but they were both out of bounds for Clark. Yeah, Vesty Jackson has it. The ball's thrown here. Vesty Jackson is going to get the interception there. He feels he's coming out of bounds. He just bobbles it right into Morrissey. Now, Morrissey was in bounds. If Vesty Jackson didn't go out of bounds, then uh, uh, that would have been their ball. At first look to us, it looked 
as if Morrissey was out of bounds, but he wasn't. No, no, he caught it inside. I think they're going to review that one. I think you have to look again at that to see if Bestie Jackson is out of bounds. They were going to see right there his foot was on the line. So again, had he intercepted it, then the foot goes on the line, it would be the Bears' ball. What they're saying is his foot was on the line before he intercepted it. So therefore, it's not the Bears' ball. It's just an incomplete pass. And it brings up a third and eight situation for the Redskins. Joe Gibbs obviously uncomfortable with the way things are standing at the moment, and so is Doug Williams. For 10 seconds. They're going to reset the clock. Well, the, the Redskins just couldn't get anything going in the first half. Kelvin Bryant is out like we've talked about. Timmy Smith started the game. He's carried three times for four yards. That's not Redskin football. And uh, for them, they have to control the line of scrimmage, the big offensive line. They're not doing that. All these things tend to give a coach problems. We're waiting for him to reset the clock. Someone was saying to us yesterday, I said how, talking about last week's game against the Saints. I said, what do you think of the Saints? How good are they? And Daryl Green, as a matter of fact, said to me, they remind me, the Saints do, of the Redskins when we were the Redskins, meaning just what you were talking about. Williams back to throw it. Clark. First down, Washington. Vesty Jackson. The defender, a pickup of 14. Now, again, if the Redskins are going to get back in this, they have to get back in control of the offensive line. Like this, Jim Lachey going against Richard Dent. If Williams is going to pass, Lachey has to keep Dent off his back. You have to fight him, push him around. If he takes the outside, make him take the beltway and go around so that Williams can step up. That'll give him the time he needs. First down, Redskins. Going to throw on first down again. Whips it to Sanders. Incomplete a flag on the play. Yeah, they blew that whistle, Pat, before Doug Williams threw that pass. So well, that had to be someone jumped offside. False start. False start, left guard. No play. No snap. Ball start, left guard. Yeah, they're right on that because they, they did blow the whistle before he threw that ball. That's the left guard is Raleigh McKenzie. He's saying that once he moved, the ball was dead. The play was dead. So this it won't count. A rebuilt in the last two weeks, Redskin offensive line. McKenzie, the left guard. Lachey, the left tackle in place of Jacoby. Bostic, Thielman, and Mark May has moved back to right tackle. Anthony Jones on the move along with McEwen. The pass bounces incomplete. Mark Monk, the intended receiver. Doug Williams has really not had a chance except on maybe two plays to get back and get set up. Well, on that play, I think they tried to get away from the rush, maybe even get away from Richard Dent by a kind of a rollout to the right. And Doug Williams looked like he just put pressure on himself on that one. I don't, I don't think he was rushed on that one. I think he did have time and just threw a bad throw. Bears take out Rivera and Morrissey and come in with six defensive backs down. receiver covered by Mike Richardson and covered very well fans are getting a little anxious here because the the Redskins have really been out of sync this whole game and it's interesting to me that a guy who's been such a big part of this offense going all the way back to the Super Bowl is Ricky Sanders and he has yet to catch a pass today either the Bears have great defense on him or Doug Williams just hasn't had the time to look at him. Look, Clark comes wide left this time, third and 15. Williams steps up in front of Dick. 
overthrows Ricky Sanders. And Doug Williams, for perhaps the first time in a long, long time, is starting to hear some boos from this crowd. Yeah, it seemed like last week, remember, when he, he went through a problem. Doug Williams is a freak quarterback. And he'll be real hot for a while, then he'll have a cold spell, but he'll come back. Last week they booed him a while through. People thought maybe they ought to put in this guy, Mark Rippon. But Doug Williams came back, got hot again, and the Redskins won the game. Greg Coleman back to kick, has a slide off the sides of the side of his foot. But with a red skin roll, it goes down to about the 10. Clarence Farm downed it there. 12 and a half minutes left to play third quarter. The NBA is back in two weeks on CBS Sports. I hear General Motors is not happy. More and more, their owners find only one luxury car gives them everything. Chrysler, New Yorker. V6, anti-lock brakes. The most advanced transmission, ultra drive. And crystal key. Better owner care than any GM sedan. Even Rolls or Mercedes. What did Chrysler do to make GM unhappy? Everything. Pure. Genuine. Never heat pasteurized. A beer that's made unlike any other. Cold filtered to give you the rich, smooth taste of real draft beer. That's the mark of a great beer. Cold filtered Miller Genuine Draft. It's as real as it gets. At UPS, we're changing the look of the international delivery business. Because now, UPS delivers to every country in Western Europe, the Pacific Rim, Down Under, and Canada. And because we're so efficient, we can deliver your international parcels and documents for fewer francs, yen, or drachmas than other companies charge. An accomplishment we feel deserves a little flag waving. UPS, we run the tidy ship in the shipping business. Next Sunday on CBS, the Bears will visit Tampa Bay, Phoenix against Houston, Detroit Green Bay, all those early. The Eagles and the Giants at the Meadowlands, where John Madden and I will be at the Atlanta Falcons, who've come on strong of late, face the Los Angeles Raiders, and the crowd is delighted to see that Mark Griffin has started to loosen up for the Redskins. And I think he'll go in the next time the Redskins get the ball back. I think he will. Sure of it. I think he will. Redskins showing blitz. Tom Zach airing it out. No flag down. As people got tangled up. It was intended for Morris. Todd Bowles. Daryl Green is the man who's down. Green had a bad knee coming in. He's been bothered by a bad knee throughout most of the year, and he's the one who got tangled up with Morris. He is. He gets tangled up with him, and it looks like as he gets tangled up, he falls down. Morris stays up. Had the ball been just a little better thrown, I think Morris would have caught this ball. You see, he just was just a little overthrown. But when Daryl Green gets tied up and goes down, maybe Morris went down on that, too. I think that's one of those things that is incidental contact that four defensive backs are out there. They got to cover these guys all over the field. Daryl Green, the fastest man in the league, one of the best cornerbacks in the league. Uh, you know, you can't call everything on him. He was saying last week that he had some sort of a tenderness behind the kneecap, and it didn't really hurt him until he got it hit, got it banged. That's exactly what happened then after he tripped. Well, he said they would look at it and they could never find anything wrong with it. So he said, well, it must be okay. But you're going to see him step on his foot right here. Right there. Yeah, right there. He steps on Morris's foot. Now, I guess that is tough. You know, you think of how big the, the field is, 110 yards and... Uh, 53 yards wide and all that thing and two guys can step on each other's toe out there. 
So Darrell limps over to the sideline. And the Redskins throughout the year, from the very beginning, that's the substitute, Woodbury. Throughout the year, they've had problems. They can't keep a solid, healthy secondary together. And those problems continue. Now, that's one of their areas. Joe Gibbs was talking about the secondary, the defensive line, the running backs, the offensive line. He said it's been a tough year to keep any consistency. On second down, the give is to Suey or Muster. I'm not sure which. It is Suey. And he got six yards, bringing up a third down situation, total offense. Neither team outstanding, but the Bears 189 to the Redskins 65 with the clock running in the third quarter. Jim McMahon We're observing the activities. Daryl Green still trying to shake off. That shot to his knee. Third down. Third and four. The Redskins change up their defense again. Contact out of a spread. Pass complete to Gentry. And Gentry stays on his feet outside the Redskins 40. A bare first down. He's looked good. I'll tell you, he's looked very good. You know, he took a couple of long shots early, deep shots, but then he's had to control passing. Look, under 10, four out of five, 23 yards. 10 to 25 out of seven. So that's been the area where he's done most of his work. None 20 to 30, none 30 to 40. Then he hit one big one, remember, early in the game, to Dennis Gentry deep. So keep the control passing game, take a deep shot every now and then. And Darrell Green back in the secondary. And off. Yes, to Matsui again. And again. Fracas makes breaks out this time between Cap Poso and again Dexter Manley. Oh, well, Cap Poso was just activated uh, today. You know, and after you're on that inactive list, you you kind of need some hits. You got to get some hits in. So you get them during the play. You get them after. <laughs> now there is a shot right there. Mike Ditka is calming someone down. <laughs> Can you believe that? He said, "Hey, look, take it easy, relax." I got it. We don't need that kind of stuff. Don't be so emotional out there. Settle down. Contact. Incomplete. And that for Ron Morris, just a little bit low. Tom Sack's doing a good job today. And uh, this guy here is hoping that he can come in and do a good job. But you know, he's done a heck of a job. It's, you look at his quarterback rating, 114. He has the best quarterback rating in the NFL. When Doug Williams had the appendicitis, he came in and, and really kept this Redskins team up. And then, remember when we saw him, it looked like each week he just got better and better and more confident. More, more confident. confident. Third and six to 46. I'm back. Make the run. Gets it out to Neil Anderson. It'll, 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 it'll be a little bit short of a first down. Made about a yard to pick up a five. Tom Sack looked like he wanted to throw one of those shuffle passes to Anderson. Started off that way. Yeah. And he, had, he looked like he wanted to throw it to him quickly, and Anderson wasn't even looking. So Tom Sack waited, 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 and finally hit him, but it's still short of the first down. So the Bears are going to have to punt here. Gary Clark will go back deep. Brian Wagner will punt. His first one traveled only 35 yards. Clark standing at the 10. 20 to nothing. Bears lead with 10 minutes left, third quarter. Call against the Bears. There is a 
gentleman who was such a fixture in the Redskin offensive line for so long. Bad ankle, bad knee, Joe Jacoby. He's been replaced the last couple of weeks by Jim Lachey. I think Jim Lachey is one of those guys who will play 10 years. And Jacoby, when he comes back, he may never get that left tackle position back again. Could very well be a guard. Good kick by Wagner. Back guy, that's what their plan is. Clark steps out of bounds at about the 12. So the Redskins have a long way to go. That's Darrell Green with the ice pack on that bruised knee. And you'll make it. Delta Airlines ticket agent Sam Singletary knows how to get people moving. Mr. Franklin, Mr. Franklin, you're back. But sometimes he has to show off a few moves of his own, the kind of moves that made him a first-string halfback. Sam Singletary shares a feeling with everyone at Delta. He loves what he's doing, and it shows. We love to fly, he's the and it shows. The product, the proving grounds, the results. STP gas treatment is the edge. You know the difference between the AC Delco parts that go into race cars and the ones that go into your car? There isn't any. AC Delco parts, they don't just fit, they match. Right now, the only thing that would taste better than a nice cold one is a cold filtered one. Yeah, sure go for one of these. Because if you want a beer whose rich, smooth, dry taste hasn't been changed by the pasteurization, we've got it down cold. Right. Cold filtered Miller Genuine Draft. It's as real as beer gets. Uh, we have a slightly revised forecast. Yeah, I'll say it's cold. Cold, cold. Willie Nelson, Delta Burke, Jack Elam, and Gerald McCraney all want to know... Where the hell does that go? Tonight, partners. Frustration on the face of Dave Butts. Mark Rippon has taken the place of Doug Williams. Dan Hampton having perhaps... Well, it's hard to say he's had so many good years, but... This certainly one of the best, and he's happier back inside. You know, last night when we talked to Dan Hampton, that was the most excited that I've seen him in about three or four years. He was ready to play the game in the hotel. That's Sanders on the move, and this is Rippon. Dave Dewerson made the stop, but it's a 13-yard pickup. You can see here, Pat, that the Redskins just couldn't get anything going today. And I don't think you always blame the quarterback for that. I think the lines have had as much to do with it as anything. But sometimes you just have to try and get a different case, get a different rhythm, get a different tempo. And that's what Joe Gibbs is doing with Mark Griffin. Griffin. Incomplete. Again intended for Monk. Covered by Mike Richardson. Let's not watch Richard Dent here. He's the outside guy. He's starting on Lachey. He starts up. Now he waits for Hampton to come inside. Hampton comes out and takes two. Takes the guard and tackle. And Dent comes up the middle free. And look who blocks him. Little Jamie Morris. Heath Griffin has taken Morris's place now as the Redskin runner. Griffin straight back. Quickly outside incomplete. Tipped, I think, by Hampton. Dan Hampton just got a hand up and deflected the ball just enough. I'll tell you, this, this bear line, again, has been in that backfield all day. And the, whether the quarterback was Rippin or the quarterback was Doug Williams, they're not letting them set. They're not letting them throw the ball when they want to. They're making them do things that they don't want to do when they don't want to do it. Look at this. You see, he had to throw the ball before Morris got there. It was Dan who got the hand up and knocked it loose. Griffin, deep for Monk. Diving catch by Monk. Richard 
action and the coverage. What a throw by Rippin and what a catch by Moore. Rippin had to let it go sidearm. How he got that ball down there, I have no idea. That's what Arch Monk, Arch Monk, he's up on top there. Man to man, he just gets by the bump. Big, strong guy, Arch Monk, he can run through a bump. Now he has a step on Richardson. Richardson chases him that step the whole time. Bump just dives out. Watch, Watch this Rippen. sidearm throw. He has to throw a sidearm. The pressure he's getting, and you see he couldn't step forward with that left foot either. Now he can get that much on the ball and not step into it is something. I mean, that's why you like a big quarterback. Rippin is six foot four, 235 pounds. 45 second clock to eight seconds. Eight. They want him to reset the 45 second clock to eight, which they have just done. It was down to four. And Rippin was saying, hey, we need more time. There's Art Monk. And as you pointed out, a big, strong guy who can get through a bump and sort of shed those defensive backs. Well, you know, the other wide receivers, Gary Clark and Ricky Sanders, they're quick guys. Art Monk plays with strength and power as a wide receiver. Ripping face. Throws he has McEwen at the five. Jewerson finally wrestled him down, a pickup of 30. And the Redskins are roaring back. And the crowd is back into this one. And Mark Rippin is in it, and Joe Gibbs has gotten exactly what he wanted. He said, we have to change things. We need something. Now, Rippin comes in, gives everything a different look. He finds Art Monk for a big one. Goes play pass, fake that run, find Craig McEwen in there. Hit him. Move the ball around. Look for different guys. So it's first and goal, Redskins for the four. Morris, maybe a half yard. Steve McMichael, number 76, first there. Didn't take long for that to happen, did it? Well, he did, and again, sometimes the backup guy has an advantage of being able to watch the first half, being able to go in at halftime, they look at the Polaroids, they make their adjustments, and then coming out and find out what they did in the first half and have basically a new approach to everything. Second and goal from the four. Clark in the backfield. And now Griffin moves in motion. And Griffin. Ricky Sanders touchdown Redskins. We've got it down cold. Cold filtered your genuine draft. It's as real as beer gets. 
It's been said Chrysler's LeBaron may be the most beautiful car to come out of an American design studio in over a decade. What hasn't been said is that it comes out with an intercooled 2.2 turbo with a security of four-wheel disc brakes and a driver's airbag standard. And that it comes out doing 0 to 60 in 7.9 seconds. One other thing that hasn't been said, it comes out at a very attractive price. The Eagles going after their second giant victory this season. But the Giants are going after revenge next Sunday on CBS Sports. And some are all John Madden, 20-7. Bears still lead. Scoring drive, seven plays. They went 88 yards behind Mark Griffin. And low minute to kick off. About a yard deep in the end zone. Taken down by Manuski and Vaughn. Now let's watch that touchdown again. Look how they line up. Here's Ricky Sanders here. Here's Jerry Clark here. Here's Keith Griffin. They have Sanders as a tight end. Clark as a running back. Now they're going to take Griffin, run him across in motion. Now this kind of confused the Bears because you see they have to go across in motion. Now right here, they're going to switch. And they're going to switch here. They get fouled up in the switch, and that's how Sanders opens up. Thomas Sanders, the running back for the Bears, hit first by Dave Butts and hit with authority. Mike Ditko looks on. You know, you never know in a football game what is going to give you life. And you see what it was? You make a move, and it doesn't always make a thing. But I think it's the biggest effect you can get is make a move of your quarterback. The Redskins did it, and then they get a touchdown. Now they come back, and they get a good kickoff coverage. Now they get a fired-up defense, and the whole thing starts to roll for them. Second and 11 for the Bears. Back at their own 20. Suey and Sanders are behind contact. Pass, which he just barely got rid of as Wilbur Marshall came from the outside on the blitz intended for McKinnon. Tom Zach was lucky to get, get rid of it. The thing a quarterback has to do is you can't see everything. The things you can't see, you have to feel. Bobstack knows that now time is up. If no one's open, I'd better throw it to someone and just don't let it get picked off. Third and 11. Tom Zach, 12 out of 20. Anderson back in the backfield behind Mike Tom Zach. play flags everywhere Tomzak gets it out to McKinnon for a pickup of about four before he's hit by Clarence Vaughn not enough for a first down let's see what the penalty is I would bet if it's against the Bears the Redskins will probably turn it down it is against the Bears the Redskins have to turn it down because down 20 to 7 they want the ball as quickly as they can get it Back deep Ellie goes Paul Jerry Clark. Fourth down. Forgive me. It was a Someone said forgive me? You don't hear that in too many football games, do you? Very seldom. I think it's the first time I've ever heard it on a football field. That's historic. Forgive me. Well, we had a turkey on the field earlier in Green Bay. Now we have a forgive me in Washington. Ever heard that? I don't think I've ever heard it. I'm sorry. I've never heard I love you. No, can't say I have either. And really, I hope I don't. You don't want too many of those. High, high kick. Clark, fair catch. Makes it the Redskins take over at their own 38. 38-yard punt. 
20 left to play in the third quarter, and it's 20 to 7. The Bears over the Redskins. If you thought you had to give up comfort to get a close shave, Norelco says, think again. Their revolutionary shaving system shaves skin close in a way that's incredibly comfortable. As the hair enters the chamber, the patented lift and cut system lifts each hair and holds it a split second before a blade cuts it, so it's possible to shave skin close without the blades even touching the skin. The lift and cut shaving system from Norelco. We made close comfortable. Can I help you? Yes, I'm looking for a special wine. What's the occasion? Well, I have this blind date. Let me show you something I like. Gallo Blush Chablis. It's just waiting to be discovered. Hi, I'm Jerry's friend, and you're the wine lady. You're Jerry's friend? Yeah. Come on in. So did I get the right wine? Perfect. Gallo Blush Chablis. A most unexpected discovery. It happens every time. A GM owner a little unhappy. He was surprised that bumper to bumper plus on a care meant plus $100 deductible after the first year every time he brings his car in for repairs. Chrysler's Crystal Key gives you the best owner care of any luxury sedan for five years or 50,000 miles with no deductible. Chrysler's New Yorker. It gives you everything except $100 deductibles. Next Saturday, a college football doubleheader here on CBS. Game one has the number one ranked Fighting Irish of Notre Dame against Penn State. And game two, number seven ranked Nebraska, 10 and one, against number eight ranked Oklahoma, nine and one. You know, when I come across the country, Pat, I go I go through Highway 80, you know, you go rolling through there, you go rolling through Nebraska, it takes it in. Everyone in that state's a Nebraska fan, and all they think about is this Oklahoma team. They haven't beat them, they've lost five straight every year. So we're going to get them this year, you hear me? So I say, yeah, I hear you, but you got to do it. You want to hear us? This is CBS. Struggles out. For a gain of six before he's tripped up finally by Singletary. Amy Morris' brother will be in action later on this afternoon when the Cardinals and Giants square off in Phoenix. New England by one over the Jets. Indianapolis back in contention again. I bet those Giants are watching this score. And I think the Redskins can lose today and the Giants can beat Phoenix. They can really get a cushion. Second down four. This is Lawrence. Left side. About a yard shy of the first. Stopped by Chapura. There's the guy, Dick Chapura. He's a, he's a one-year guy. You know, he was a strike guy. Made the team. He gets down there in that four-point stance. Plays off those guys, plays inside, then plays plays that run just like you're supposed to. Take on some guys, some guys in there, bodies flying around. Come right down the line and make the play. Third and one, and Timmy Smith for the first time in a long time. Back a deep spot for the Redskins. Smith, enough for a first. Single Terry made the stop, but that's enough. That's all they're using Timmy Smith for today is, is for that short yardage and goal line. He didn't look like he wanted to come out of this. Well, I think he's really a running guy, and when they, they start throwing and they have to come from behind, they really don't need the runner in there anymore. They have Jamie Morris. Here's Rippin. Fires out of the park. That's going to be about a half yard short of a first. And now for an NFL update, let's take you again back to New York and Brent Musburger. At the longest pass play in the history of the Pittsburgh Steelers, Terry Bradshaw once went 90 yards to Mark Malone. Here's a challenge. It is Brister on the roll, and he's got lips for a touchdown that goes 89 yards. 
That's why the Steelers are ahead of the Eagles. Let's go back to Pat and John. And that score would surprise a lot of people. I don't think this one would. All of the Redskins are coming back. Bears lead it 20 to 7. As a matter of fact, the Redskins were favored. Rippin is five out of seven for 97 yards. The touchdown pass to Sanders. Second and one, Monk in motion. Rippin has the ball stripped by Dent. Lachey jumped on it. So the Redskins will keep it. Hey, Dent causes more problems. You watch him here. Here's Lachey. Here's Dent. He just does it with speed. He comes right around, and he's going to hit Rippon from behind here and knock the ball out. See, he takes that outside rush. At that point, when he gets even, he can just outrun him. And he's always grabbing for the ball when he does it. See, he got his right hand out there. I don't know why that wasn't a fumble. Or I guess it was a fumble. It was a fumble. And, and Lachey recovered it. That's why it was a fumble. Third down now. Sanders on the move. Rippin backpedals. For Clark. Intercepted by the Bears, Vesti Jackson. And he is down. Bears will take over at about their own six yard line. Second interception of the day for Vesti Jackson. There are no penalty markers, so the Bears will take over at their own six. I think that was one of the things the Redskins were going to work on Vesty Jackson. The Bears were going to work on Barry Wilburn. You see here, pretty good pass protection. The Bears came on a stunt. Rippon did have time. The thing is, it was double coverage, though. And Vesty Jackson got the position on the ball. Gary Clark couldn't get beyond him. A minute 40 left. Third quarter, Bears 20, Redskins 7. Neil Anderson splits wide to the left. Mike Tomczak is quartered back all the way. Back pedals for Anderson. It's where they wanted to go, and Tomczak put it in there perfectly. Alvin Walton on the coverage, and the Bears get out of a hole. Suey is slow getting up. He's been a very durable, quiet, Contributor over the years. Oh, Matt Suey, he's the guy that's like a nose tackle on offense. They call him a fullback. But he's the guy they put Anderson out as a flanker. They keep Suey in the block. Now, that is a tough block. You have to go around the quarterback, come up, pick up that guy coming in the middle, whack, stick him right there so that your quarterback can throw a deep one. First down, Bears. This can show a blitz. This is Anderson. Neil Anderson. At about the 47 yard line, the Bear 47. Todd Poles knocked him out. Gain of four. It was funny when we talked to Mike Tomczak last night, and he said, Well, we got a new formation that we're really going to use. We're going to put Neil Anderson out as a flanker. And he had a smile on his face. He said, I think we're going to get him on that one. That's the second time they did it. What they do is they get him out and they isolate him on Alvin Walton. A strong safety who is not a great cover guy. Again, Anderson comes out on Walton to the right side. Ten seconds left to play third quarter. Poso is the move man. Draw play, Suey. Suey knocked forward by the Redskins. Hit from behind by Manley and might have knocked him forward enough for a bare first down. In any case, that's the end of the third quarter. With the score, the Bears 20, the Redskins 7. We now pause for a word from your local station. This is CBS. Shirts. We've loosened our collar. 
those stadium dogs. Who put seeds on hot dog buns? <laughs> Look at this poor guy. What's he doing? I think he's changing the four-wheel drive. What do you mean? On the Ford Ranger, when you want to shoot the four-wheel drive, you got to stop and get out and change the hubs. How do you do it in a Chevy? Like this. <laughs> Boy, I bet the boys at Ford are pretty happy about that. Yeah, they're jumping up and down. <laughs> Suppose he knows about it? Now it's probably not a good time to tell him. The light's green. <laughs> Johnny Morris, live from the Bears locker room today after the game. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by AT&T, the right choice. United Airlines, rededicated to giving you the service you deserve. Come fly the friendly skies. And by Subaru, we built our reputation by building a better car. RFK Stadium in Washington and a quarter to go Pat Summerall with John Madden Bears ball at the Redskin 47 Anderson and Suey behind Tomczak Redskin blitz hits Anderson in the backfield is Alvin Walton and he timed that perfectly well, that's where Alvin Walton wants to stay he wants to stay up at or around the line of scrimmage. He doesn't want to be back there. He wants to get right up there in the action. See, he wants to be up there tight. And now when, when the ball snaps, he doesn't want to have to go out and cover. See, if he's right up there like a linebacker, he hits the hole on a blitz before they can even get started. So that makes it second and 14. Suey tried to block Walt. All he could do was grab him by the feet. He was already there. Incomplete. Incomplete. Intended for Wendell Davis. Wilburn on the coverage. Comzak with little time. You know, I think as you look at the statistics of this game, one of the things that Mike Comzak has done well in this game is he's come up with some big plays. He's been very efficient, but the Bears haven't had a turnover. Now, the Redskins have had two. But I think when you have a team like the Bears, and you have the best defense in football, you don't want a, any follow-up. Tom Zach has been able to get rid of the ball as well. Look at all the Redskins up on the line of scrimmage. All 11. And now two back away. Here comes Walton. Somebody picked him up, but they put so much heat on Tom Zach, he could get nothing on it. Wilbur Marshall was the one who hit Tom Zach just as he let it go. As you said, Pat, all 11 were up there on the line of scrimmage. Then two backed out, then Walton still came. Wilbur Marshall breaks free, comes up there. But Tomczak did a great job of getting rid of the ball. Wilbur Marshall, of course, the old teammate, says, hey, I don't want to hurt you, but i got to make you do something. We're in this game to win it. Back deep, Clark again. The punt for the Bears. And a good one. Clark is going to signal fair catch. Let it pass, and it's down to the five by the Redskins. Lorenzo Winch. Down to it now. There's another break that's going on. Not serious. This is what it's like for the guy who's outside who can go down. He's always going to draw two. That's a double coverage. They bump him, they let him go. Then the other guy bumps him. Then they let him go. Then the other guy bumps him. And that goes on all the way down the field. Then the whistle blows. They don't know the whistle's blowing. They're still playing football. They got about 40 men on the field before that play ever was resolved. Morris is the running back. Ripping. Outside. 
incomplete. Intended for Clark. That's one of the toughest jobs in football, being that outside guy in a punt cover team. Probably the toughest, though, is being the punt returner himself. I know last week Dexter Manley was saying that I would rather fight Mike Tyson and be a punt returner in this league. I'm not sure. I'm not either, but I, 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 I don't know that I'd want to do either. Well, I'm not going to. I'm not even going to dream about it. Here's Rippon retreating into the end zone. Ball is batted up in the air, and it will be incomplete. Dent again put the heat on. Now that Bear defense lines up in a different front every play. And, and they have done an outstanding job of breaking a guy free every time. I mean, they've done it with blitzes. They've done it with stunts. They've done it with crosses. But they always break someone into the Redskin backfield all day. And Mike Singletary, is, if you look at the quarterbacks of the Redskins under pressure, Singletary is the guy who makes sure everyone is supposed where they're supposed to be. Rippin Pass almost intercepted. There's a flag on the play, however. Vesty Jackson almost came up with another one. Intended for Ricky Sanders. The penalty marker is down, however. And it's against the Bear. Holding number 37. Defense, five yards. Automatic first down. That's the big thing about that penalty. It's only five yards, but that was a third down play. But now it's five yards, and it's an automatic first down. Maurice Douglas was called for the holding penalty. First down, Redskins now at their own 10-yard line. 13.45 left to play, and Washington trailing 20-7. The Bears have dominated the line of scrimmage. And somehow he caught it before he was hit by Durson. You talk about, as John Madden did earlier, about a tough little guy. There is one tough little guy. And he knows that ball was hung up by Mark Griffin. He knows that Durson is coming. I mean, you have to feel that one coming. Griffin scrambles out, throws back across the field. Watch Clark. He's going to catch that ball and hang in there. I'll tell you, there are some that, that wouldn't be too anxious to do that, but this guy is not only a good receiver, but he is one of the toughest guys in this entire league. I really believe that. Douglas, who was in the bottom of that pile after Clark made the catch, is the man who has to go to the sideline. David Tate will take his place. Of course, he started today for David Tate because they figured he'd be bigger and stronger and give more help against the run and more help on the three wide receivers, which he has. First down, Redskin. Griffin having the throw on every down. Does it again? McEwen was open but couldn't come up with it. Again, for an NFL update, let's take you to Brent Musburger in New York. Pat and John, we've got eight and a half minutes to go in Pittsburgh. The Eagles with that one-point lead, and Pat, here's how they got it. Cunningham, taking off, ran in for his second touchdown. It's 24-23. Back to Pat and John. Remarkable athlete. Randall Cunningham will see him next week in the Meadowlands against the Giants. Keith Griffin in the backfield here for the Redskins. Second and ten. Sanders on the move. Griffin just does get rid of it again. Clark was wide open. Rippin didn't have time to find him. Jackson almost came up with another interception, but it's incomplete. Hey, he had good protection. Rippin did early. And then it's going to break down right at the end. The Redskin guys are really fighting him off, giving him time. And right there, he got the old high-low job. 
That's Sean Smith, number 97. He was the guy who was on the bottom of that high-low job. But they, if they keep throwing on Vesty Jackson, they're going to make him all pro here today. Third down and 10. Monk is good line to the right. You would think they might go in that direction. Flag on the play. Richardson, the defender, but a penalty marker is down, and the Redskins are indicating it is against the Bears. Of course, they would. They all start pointing after that. Look, Monk is out of bounds. Now, the official at that time should throw his hat because he can't come in and be a receiver again. He can come in and get a deflected pass but not be a receiver. Richardson actually came down with the ball. Illegal contact, 27 defense, five yards, automatic first down. Well, they threw a penalty then on Mike Richardson. The illegal contact was Art Monk right there. They got the wrong guy there. Now he threw that flag before. He threw it on the wrong guy. That official completely blew that. That's unbelievable. And the guy was there. He gets the play. He didn't interfere. He was interfered with. That's injustice. That's 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 bad. That's that's, that's incompetent. First and ten for Rippon and the Redskins. Come on, it's incomplete. He had it, dropped it. Now he's saying it's incomplete. I beg your pardon. He's saying it's a complete pass. Now they've changed that. Vince Dover is fighting. He can't believe the turn of events here. Well, I beg your pardon again. Now they rule it a complete pass. This one. Now how is that complete? No, oh, that's not complete. <laughs> They've reached a new level of lowness right here. If he doesn't come down with both feet, he doesn't have the ball. The ball's Please going to have to... 45 second clock to 24. 24. These guys are having trouble out there today. Further I mean, reviewed just... by the replay official. We have a reversal. The pass is incomplete. Well, uh, thank goodness for instant replay. So that brings up second and 10. Redskin ball at their own 35, 12, 27 left to play. Monk will be split wide to the right. Clark to the left. They're still talking to the replay guy. They may be talking about, hey, you guys followed up the one before that, too. That's too late, though. <laughs> that's, that's over the hill. Rob McElwee wants a conversation. Next week, it begins at 12.30 Eastern time with the NFL today. Bears go to Tampa Bay, Phoenix at Houston, Detroit at Green Bay. That's early. Late. The Eagles and the Giants. That's where we'll be at second and ten. Dent is loose. Dent got away from Lachey. Richard Dent is fired up today. He's right here. Here's Jim Lachey, one of the best. He's just taking him on man to man. Whack. When this guy gets going and he plays at about that fourth or fifth level, he gets to a point where you can't block him no matter what you do. That time there, he just ran by Lachey. I think it was a good pass rush by Dent, and I don't think it was a good effort by Jim Lachey, to be honest. He's a better player than that. There were no moves involved. He just went blind. Yeah, he just got slow. You got to boom. You got to get up and fly. Here's the cure. The intended receiver is picked off by Richardson for the Bears and is deflected. Rippon under pressure again. McEwen was the intended receiver. That's the third, third 
turnover. Richardson could say, hey, I told you. That interference you called on Art Monk, that other play you called, there again is dead right on him. He looked like he could have changed direction of the ball. And it was hit again, and there's Mike Richardson. He said that evens it out. Say, if Dent, Dent's playing one of the best games I've, I, I've seen him play in a long time. Bears take over at the Redskin 24. 11.53 left to play. First and 10, Suey. And Neil Anderson. Behind Tom Zach. Suey. after a gain of two. Turnovers. They can really, really turn the complexion of a season, a game, and a coach's career right around, can't they? Yeah, I think that's the thing that Joe Gibbs has been talking about all year is they're minus 14. But they've given up so many more than they've gotten, and then somewhere you got to balance that thing out. That's part of the story today, but the bigger part, and Joe Gibbs hates this part of it, his team is being physically whipped. Whipped on the line of scrimmage in the trenches. Second and eight, Tom Zach chased by Manley. Pass intended on the sideline for Anderson. Mel Kaufman, the linebacker, back there with him along with Todd Bowles. Yeah, when we were talking last night to Dan Hampton, I think the reason he was so excited, his whole Bear team, he said, just think of what we could do. He said, this could be historical. We lose all the players. I mean, Willie Golf's gone. Wilbur Marshall's gone. Then we lose our coach. He has a heart attack. Then we lose our quarterback, Jim McMahon. We lose all these things, and we still win it. He said, if we could win it under these conditions, win the whole thing, he said, that's history. We'll be part of history. 13 rookies on this Bear team. That's almost unheard of. Come back. Gentry, touchdown. Justy gets you anywhere you want to go less expensively than any other four-wheel drive car. Mm, Mr. Potts, you're home. Of course. What brings you out on a night like this, James? Up to $1,000 cash back from Subaru means a great deal on a great car. Is there some sort of problem? Big room pitch. Well, it, it, it's smooth, like your skin. Violet berries? Luscious, like your lips. Come with me. See, it's a big seagull golden eye. It sparkles, like your eyes. Anything for world peace. This NFL game summary is sponsored by Seagram's Coolers. This is where the fun starts. To summarize the game, Mike Ditka, the Bears head coach, is on the sideline. Rushing yards, 76 for the Bears, 17 for Washington. Tom Zack has had a good day, but the key to the whole thing, as we've been pointing out, I hope, John, has been the dominance up front. That's what I think. I mean, when the Bears have the ball, that offensive line of theirs have completely stopped the defensive line of the Redskins. They've handled whatever they give them up there. And then on the other side, 
their defense has been able to handle the Redskin offense. Let's watch the last touchdown here. Again, good pass protection here. Gentry just runs right down and hits in a seam of a zone. You watch him here in the slot. They have four wide receivers. You see the zone develop there. Now watch, you see the seam between the corner and the safety. He takes it there, and Tom Sack hit him perfectly. Gentry's had a pretty good day. That was five catches, 116 yards. That one gave him a touchdown. Here's Butler's kickoff. Morris at the three. Jamie Morris hits at about the 23 by Lemuel Stinson. That's some old John Madden at RFK Stadium. You know, I agree with Mike Ditka, John, as we go from NFL city to city. This is one heck of a place to observe and feel the atmosphere of pro football. Well, to me, this is what football is all about. I mean, it, I mean, it has everything. It has, you know, great fans that make a lot of noise. The whole place shakes. It's outdoor. There's no roof over it. They got grass. It's weather. It's it's the whole thing. I mean, this is NFL football season right here. Yeah. Ricky Sanders was the man in motion. Here is Griffin to Jimmy Smith. Green pass games four. Singletary broke it up. One of the things about this bear defense that you, know, you always think of a blitzing and so on, they really don't blitz as much as they used to under Buddy Ryan. We are talking last night, and, and Dan Hampton said, you know, he said, we never bring more than five guys anymore. With Buddy Bryant, we used to bring six. We used to bring seven. We used to bring eight. You know, we'd always try and get him out, man. He said, now with this defense, we don't do that as much. Here's Griffin. And Jennifer Sanders incomplete. They might make you think that they're going to bring a lot of people, but they don't. As Hampton was saying, Jacoby is in the game at well, he's right play, side. Yeah, yeah, he's playing the right side. Jim Lachey is still over there at that left tackle. And they must have taken Teal out. out. Yeah, because Mark May has moved to the right guard. the way they set up the schedules for the following season after you're the champion look at their remaining schedule but you know it's Joe, anywhere yeah as Joe Gibbs says about that at some point we have to win games and you gotta find out what you're gonna be and there's no back doors if you play the schedule and even though it's tough if you can't win the tough games then you don't belong in the playoffs anyway I yeah. kind of agree with that in the meantime the Bears under Mike Ditka Right now under Tobin, Vince Tobin, Tampa Bay, Green Bay, the Rams, tough outing. Detroit two and eight, Minnesota, with whom they finish. Combined record of 19 and 31. But once you get to this point, I don't think anybody looks at the records of the other folks anyway. Yeah, I mean, you look at them and they're good because of the way they play defense, the way they're efficient on offense. Pass complete. Flag on the play, complete to Monk. He's covered by Jackson with a flag on the play. Dewerson came on a blitz that time. Holding. And I think that's going to be against Jackson probably, Pat, because it looked like both he and Monk were down before the ball was ever thrown to him. Holding, 24, defense, five yards, automatic first down. I think that he and Bunk had a little wrestling match before the ball got there because Mark Griffin threw the ball to Art Monk and he was already on the ground. Dusty Jackson was already on the ground with him. With Art Monk. That's, that's the way, remember in the old days when you used to play tackle on the grass in the mud on your knees, you couldn't right. leave your knees? That's the way they were playing. <laughs> First 
touchdown, Redskins. Redskins back to throw. Under pressure, gets it to Gary Clark. That'll be another Redskin first down. Pick up a 14, Stinson was the Bear defender. And you're going to see Gary Clark, the outside guy there. He's just going, getting the first down, then he's going to get right down on both knees. Just bring that ball in there. Now, again, there was no one hit him there. He could have got up and run, but by the time he was ready, they converged on him. Flag on the play. Or Sanders knocked away at the last second by Beth D. Jackson. Penalty marker, however. They, they, they have had a plan here, or maybe it just fell that way, that, that wherever Bestie Jackson is, they want to throw the ball. And McMahon. Hey, it'll be good to see him him back. I know that Mike Tomczak's doing well here. Offense. Penalty decline, second down. Mike Tomczak has proved that he can carry on, that he can win, but... I really think that, that the Bears are good for football. I think Jim McMahon is good for football. Mike Ditka. That you need some characters, some characters, something to talk about, something that brings everything to life. You know, boom, pumps that spirit out of there. Rippin is going to come out of there with a flag on the play. Rippin is tripped up, lands on his head, but seems to be okay. Stinson tripped him up, a gain of six, but a flag is down again. Someone knocked Gary Clark down before Rippin could throw it. Rippin wanted to throw it to Clark. And someone knocked him down, and I'm sure that's what the penalty is. You see it right there. You see Clark on top. You see Stinson? He just grabs him and knocks him down, pulls him down. That's who Rippin was Holding trying to throw to. 32 defense, and forced from the end of the run, five yards, first down. Dick is out there saying, not, you're not going to get that tonight. You see him, he just shook his head. No, that, that won't bother me. That won't bother me. That's as calm as he gets. No, no. He did take a sweater off, though, and get up in the first half. He was sitting on the bench most of the half. You know, and again, Pat, that was one of those, again, a rush stat. He was hurried. He wasn't, he couldn't step up. That wasn't who he wanted to throw to. Dan Hampton was in his backfield. Hampton was coming. Watch him. We'll see 99. Hampton come right up the middle. You see there? Now, see that? Now, he has to move out, and he can't throw when he wants to or like he would want to. So he throws an interception. But again, that stat, that interception should be half of Dan Hampton, if that makes sense. But that's been happening all day. Those guys have been in their backfield all day. They've been close. Look at these people are saying, the heck with it. Those bear guys have been in our backfield all day. I'm leaving this joint. Last three times the Redskins have had the ball has ended in an interception. Flag on the play again. Suey with the ball muster. Take it part. Suey is resting. Number one draft card. Stop by. Alvin Walton. Steelers have gone back ahead of the Eagles. Do you believe Cincinnati, one of the Off best the teams in the league? Defense, number 50. First down. New England, Doug Flutie, you like that. Butler there. How does a guy make a new pair of shoes? I mean, you're an ex-kicker. You talked to Butler. He's a kicker. And he told you how to make some new shoes today? If I had had my shoes stolen, I'd be kicking barefoot because I only had one pair. Yeah, well, you had that old square toe because right. you ticked it from the front. These guys sneak up on it from the side. Those don't look like new ones. They remade. He left a little piece of red on the back of his kicking shoe in tribute to the Georgia Bulldogs where he played. They, of course, lost to Auburn yesterday. They'll still probably go to a bowl, but that's why the red's on the back of the shoes. <laughs> you got to think about that. Sanders to the 
34. Bold. On the stop, a gain of eight. This is assuming now that the Redskins do go on and lose this game for the Bears. Looks like they will. Phoenix and the Giants play later than this afternoon. The Cardinals could tie the Giants with a victory and would leave the Redskins in with some work to do. Well, you know, and if the Giants win that game, they could really get a leg up because they've already beaten the Redskins twice this year. Then if they beat Phoenix, you know, then that gives them that tiebreaker there. So this is a big, big day for the Giants. Sanders over the right side on first down, picked up a couple. In the NFC Central, the Bears would improve to 9-2. and two. Minnesota plays Dallas tonight. If they win, they'll still be two games behind, and the other three pretty much out of it. I think the Bears are, you know, you, you can't relax because the team that's going to be the best team, and I think right now the Bears are the best team in the NFL. And New quarterback, excuse me, for the Bears, Jim Harbaugh. But I don't think that they can relax and say, well, we're already in the playoffs. They probably are. But I think if they want to do something in the playoffs, they have to keep getting better every week. Sanders. And the whole group whirls out of bounds. Sanders got, however, 10 yards stopped by Wilburn and Kaufman. Look at that. When you play like Dave Butts there and you play in the middle of things, stuff grows right out of your helmet. I mean, look, see, there's a plant growing out of his head there today. And that happens in the pits, Pat. I mean, down there, no one pays any attention to you. You know, you're down there, you're a defensive tackle, you got centers, guards blocking you, tackles double teaming down, they're picking you away inside. And lo and behold, stuff grows right out of your head. Well, that helmet's big enough to have its own nursery anyway. Redskin defenders for a gain of nine, Walton and Bowles. You know, I think that was an example of what's been happening all day today, Pat. Just watch this line of guys here take this line and put it back here with the back end behind it. I mean, these five guys in there are just controlling that whole line. Watch, they make contact. All the white jerseys go back, and they've been going back most of the day. And the clock is going down. Five minutes remain now. This is Sanders again. And there's a fumble, and the Redskins come up with it. Neil Olkowitz on top of it. Washington will take over at their own 45. Well, you got to give him credit, Mike Ditka. He has remained relatively calm yeah but I would think if I were Mike Ditka now I'd go in I wouldn't worry about these things you see here it looks like Sanders is just trying to make a move and that ball gets hit and pops out just at the time he gets to the line of scrimmage Ditka looks more excited and anxious now than he did earlier in the game Chased by Dent is going to run with it and run out of bounds. Slide at midfield. S.D. Jackson chased him. For another NFL update, let's take you again to New York and Brent Musburger. Pat, the smallest crowd in the history of the Silverdome getting its money's worth. Inside of a minute, and Rusty Hilter goes to Gary James. Extra point is good, and they appear headed for overtime. Tied at 20. Back here, comes that, I beg your pardon, Rippin hits Sanders. A gain of seven. If the Bears do indeed continue and win this game, Tom Zach will be 13 and two as a starter. Here's Rippin. Come on, out of bounds. you can't I mean this guy has had his run-ins I guess you'd call them run-ins confrontations with Mike Ditka 
been maligned to some degree, but a record of 13 and two as a starter, you can't uh, you can't minimize that. Well, he's had that, but I think one of his problems is he's felt that everything was on his shoulders, like he kept saying monkey on his back. He had to go see a psychologist. He's been working with a, a psychologist to learn to cope with that. that it's not all on your shoulders. We have defense, special teams, a lot of other things here. Written incomplete. In it for Sanders. Here comes the flag again. Vesty Jackson was the defender with Sanders. But let's see about the penalty. I think it's against the Redskins, Pat. I don't think it was even on that play. I think it was another official calling something on the inside against the Redskins. Second down. That flag looked like it was interfered with when it was headed for the ground. Well, he threw it from center field, and the guy that was on it didn't call it. They called the interference on Ricky Sanders that time. Remember one earlier, we, we saw one that we thought should have been on Art Monk, and they called it on uh, Mike Richardson. That time they did call it on the offense. That'll make it second and 20, 27-7. Bears by 20 over the Redskins, 351 left to play. Washington miscues today, four turnovers, six penalties, 69 yards, and one muffed punt. Well, and the big thing, I think, the big story of that is not that, that Washington is miscued as much as, as an aggressive bear defense has forced them to do things that they didn't want to and maybe when they didn't want to. Right side of the Redskin offensive line now is Jacoby and May. Bostic in the middle, center. McKay and McKenzie to the left. Martin in motion. Here's Rippin with no place to go. Now he's going to find and find some more room. To McEwen. McEwen knocked out of bounds inside the 10. Stinson. And Trump got him out of bounds, but Rippin very patiently got 45 yards after he was flushed out of the pocket. And that's one thing will get Mike Ditka's blood pressure up because the defense just quit chasing Rippin on that thing. Rippin out hustled the defense. They were going, and they kind of got lulled to sleep here. Maybe the 27 to 7 lead they gave up before the last four minutes are played here. But that is the thing, is they let him run around there and climb a few, and no one was chasing him. A lot of spectators out there that time. First and goal from the six. 3.28 remaining. Griffin to throw. Flag on the play, pass incomplete for Keith Griffin. On the defense. They're lucky they only had 12. They had 14 there just before they got 12. The Eagles have gone ahead of Pittsburgh now. 27-26. If they win and the Redskins lose, they will tie Washington. And then Phoenix and the Giants play later in Phoenix. This bear defense, they've been in that redskin backfield all day, and they're tired of chasing that guy. They, they all look like they've been through a game now. Let's get this thing over. See why Dan is such a good pass rusher? He got those long legs. Look, his legs go all the way up to his chest darn near. And then he got those long arms. You know, and that's what really makes a good pass rusher, a guy with long arms that can keep those guys away from him, those offensive blockers. Then those long legs where you can take those long strides in a burst. 
And then probably the other thing is pretty good. You got a lot of talent too. I mean, just because you got a lot of speed and yeah, yeah, I mean speed and ability. I mean, just because you got big old long legs and big old long arms doesn't necessarily make you a great pass rusher. But I always thought that that did. I always thought that the long arms and strong hands were the two most important important ingredients in a pass rusher. I'm not sure well what been this. On the field. Well been Defense. on the field. That's the penalty, but I'm not sure why it took that long. Maybe they were going and counting them, but like I said, just before the ball was snapped, they had 14. Now they got three coming in again. Now three are going out. They're right. Nope. Four are going out. Four are coming in. They're still right. But I'm now not there's, sure they all there's know two on the side. Oh, they're confusion. All kinds of confusion. these three wide receivers Clark Monk and Sanders is they all want the ball and you can see Gary Clark there they hate to lose yeah, they're trying to pump some life back into a dead horse but Rippin is trying and Clark just made a play there but you can tell that's more of a frustration thing than a happiness to the sport extra point by Low Miller is good it's 27 14 with 320 remaining Gary Clark this scored the second the Redskins touchdown. And I don't want anyone driving my XT while I'm away. You understand. The Subaru XT6 has a powerful six-cylinder engine, computerized full-time four-wheel drive, and a design which makes it hard to resist. Somebody drove my car. Who was it? Up to $1,000 cash back from Subaru means a great deal on a great car. The thing on a personal level that probably frustrates all of us, most of us, certainly myself personally, is when you hear companies using up to X percent less. And you really need to do your homework before you choose intelligently. Uh, we, we have distance sensitivity time of day, day of week sensitivity. Most cases, our cost differential will be small enough that the quality will more than differentiate you staying with AT&T. Pure. Genuine. Never heat pasteurized. A beer that's made unlike any other. Cold filtered to give you the rich, smooth taste of real draft beer. That's the mark of a great beer. Cold filtered Miller Genuine Draft. It's as real as it gets. Penn State collides with top-ranked Notre Dame. Then the battle for the Big Eight, Nebraska, Oklahoma. A blockbuster doubleheader next Saturday on CBS Sports. Not much question, John, but that we're going to see an onside kick attempt here by the Redskins. Well, that's what the Redskins have to do now. They need two scores to win this game, so they can't kick deep and play defense. They have to try and, after the score, right now, get the ball out. Well, they had a chance. That was a good job by Low Miller. That was a good, good onside kick, if there is such a thing. The ball was never made ready for play. The ball was never made ready for play. Kick it again. The ball was never made ready for play. I always thought when the official gave it to the kicker that that officially made it ready to play. I did hear a whistle blow. Maybe the referee has to blow the whistle to start. But I thought they didn't give him the ball until they're ready. As a rule, they don't. 
there's no there's no penalty for it obviously they kicked off from the 35 and they're still kicking off so it must be all right to to, to take your shots before you're ready to play so that was just a free play for the Redskins. That certainly looks like it. I guess they say that they have to wait for the referee who's down deep for his whistle to be ready to play. There they go. They're all ready now. This one counts, Pat. <laughs> that one didn't go 10 yards to begin with. Wendell Davis came down with it. So even with the free shot, the Bears still maintain possession. But that was the thing the Redskins had to do because, again, there's, uh, you know, three minutes left to go, and they're down two scores. So they just can't wait. Receivers have the football first and ten. Bears football at the Redskins 41-yard line. First and 10, 315 remain. Now, of course, the Bears just want to run as much time off the clock on every play as they can. Anderson and Muster behind Harbaugh, the quarterback. Anderson. And he gets it back. Man made sure that he stayed down. A loss of nine. Working to be the best they can be. <laughs> Teammates sponsored by the U.S. Army. Jim Gray and Leroy Urban have a knack for making defensive cornerback an offensive position. By using their skills to attack the opposition, Gray and Urban have made the big play commonplace for the Rams defense. Each week, these teammates accept the challenge of the NFL's best. Whether it's covering wide receivers, cracking running backs, or blocking kicks, Leroy Urban and Jerry Gray work together to make the Rams the best they can be. Most of my friends don't know what they're going to do after graduation, but I've already locked in guaranteed skill training in the Army. Qualify now and you can reserve even the Army's most sought-after technical training, up to 12 months in advance, through the Army's delayed entry program. Sure, being a soldier won't be easy, but then nothing worth having ever is. College football doesn't get any better than this. The tradition-rich power of Penn State. Can Paterno rally his Nittany Lions to upset the top-ranked team in the nation? The undefeated Irish of Notre Dame. Then, the battle for the Big Eight. Nebraska collides with Oklahoma. From pre-game through post-game, you'll know because they know. A blockbuster doubleheader next Saturday on CBS Sports. Tonight on CBS starts with 60 minutes. Dartmouth is being called for interference, and it has nothing to do with Ivy League football. What's that all about? Well, watch 60 minutes tonight. That's followed by murder, she wrote. Then it's the Sunday night movie, Where the Hell's That Gold, starring Willie Nelson and Jackie Lamb. That's all tonight on CBS. What did Dartmouth do? Watch 60 Minutes. Oh, I know. Well, yesterday, you know, I have a son. My son Joe plays at Brown, and they lost to Dartmouth yesterday. Maybe Dartmouth did something illegal. Well, it says it had nothing to do with football. But maybe it does. We don't know. Anderson. Around the corner and down the sideline is Neil Anderson. And he's going to score for Chicago. 50 yards, Neil Anderson. You get this big one more little pump. There you go. They were trying to run the clock out, run time off the clock. Neil Anderson breaks puzzle, runs at 50 yards, and the glass just popped right out of Ditka's glasses on that one. You see that? Yeah. Huh? He got so excited, poof. That thing just popped right out of there. He can't get it back in there. Dick Stanfell, his offensive line coach, not offering any assistance with the glasses, but smiling a lot. Extra point by Butler is good, and it's 
Hawks 34-14. This is some run here. I mean, Neil Anderson is going to be one of the top backs in this league because he's big, he's strong, he's explosive. And watch right at this point there. There's Daryl Green chasing him, who's the fastest guy in the NFL. Well, if Daryl Green's the fastest, Neil Anderson ought to get in that race because he just beat him. Daryl Green hurt his knee, however, and it's been bothering him for a long time. Anderson today. Pretty good average. There's Kelvin Bryant. He was, you know, a big producer in this Redskin offense. Injured his knee last week against the New Orleans Saints. Tried to get it ready this week. And they thought, well, they'd make the decision yesterday. He couldn't practice yesterday. And they they, they made a move with him today. Cook, the owner of the Redskins, obviously unhappy today. Dynamic man. And he's a very competitive man. You know, he puts a lot into this thing, and he kind of lives and dies with his team himself, Jack Ken Cook. Amy Martin brings it out for the Redskins. Dante Jones made the stop. Morris brought it back 30 yards. Next Sunday, it begins with the NFL today. The Bears, Tampa Bay, Phoenix, Houston. Detroit goes to Green Bay. John Dan and I will be at the Meadowlands in New York, New Jersey. And Atlanta goes to the Raiders. The Eagles pull another one out by a point. They keep their hopes alive. A poor record, six and five. A big one coming up against the Giants. Griffin. And send it for McEwen and complete. The standings in the NFC's Eastern Division. The Giants against Phoenix later this afternoon. Win by the Cardinals. Could improve their record to seven and four. Giants obviously would be tied for first with them, and the Redskins at six and five. Just a game out if that happens. The game has started, by the way. The Giants and Phoenix. No scores yet. Pass incomplete. Monk thought he had it. The official didn't. You know, the Redskins, again, are just living proof. Whatever the reason is, that once you win the Super Bowl, the next year it's just about impossible. And you, you know, you can say they get too satisfied, the, the schedule is tougher, they, I don't know. I don't know exactly what it is, or I don't know why it is, but I think it's darn near an impossibility to win it one year and come back and win it the next year. In the beginning, it wasn't that way. But now, I think you're right. If it's distractions or what it is. Dan. McEwen stays on his feet, gets down to the 25. Dent was all over. Mark Griffin, he still got it out of there. David Tate finally stopped him. And the defense was all over McEwen. It's a zone defense. They really have the thing surrounded. They had five guys around them, and McEwen just ran in the middle of all of them and caught the ball. Been a big day for McEwen. The Redskins take a timeout. They only have one more, but they'll get another one with the two-minute warning. You know, McEwen, has, that was his third catch for 120 yards. And I think with all those other guys, you know, when you talk about the, you know, Sanders and Clark and Monk, the McEwen was kind of the forgotten guy. He just ran right through the defense. He said, ah, they won't throw to McEwen. Raiders in San Francisco are underway with no score. Houston Oilers looking tougher and tougher every week. McEwen, three catches for 120 yards. Kind of think you don't expect from number 32. 
Well, he's the H-back, you know, and, and the H-back is really a second tight end. And since they've been going to three wide receivers and they play all three at the same time, McEwen is the guy who comes out, too. That's Hunt moving and ripping back to throw. Two months. Out of bounds. Misty Jackson, clock stop, and we'll get the two-minute warning. Ten-yard pickup. There's 34. Washington, 14. century and more, business travelers have depended on United Airlines to get them to their most important meetings. United, rededicated to giving you the service you deserve. Come fly the friendly skies. Day after day, more people depend on Subaru wagons than any imported wagon in America, and with good reason. They're reliable and durable. In fact, if Subaru didn't make your life easier, Honey, is dinner ready? who would? Ha! Up to $1,000 cash back from Subaru means a great deal on a great car. Back at RFK Stadium in Washington, the Redskins have one timeout left. They trail the Bears 34 to 14. Sweet revenge. To a degree, I guess you'd have to say, John, for the Bears, after the Redskins knocked them out of the playoffs the last two years. Well, then, like we said, that that score had been up there for two years on that on that house that's overlooking the practice field that Mike Ditka has been looking at for two years, and maybe they could put in this year's score. Kansas City has upset Cincinnati. Nick Flowery kicked a field goal, 39 yards, with two seconds to go. down there pointing where his feet were. Yep. You know, and the good receiver knows because he sees his feet. Gary Clark is saying he was in. After the play, he points to the officials where his feet were. He has the ball. He has both feet down. Unless that was one of Vesty Jackson's feet we were looking at. Looks like he drags him right here. Or if he has a knee down. Remember, one knee right there. There's a knee. But the knee was out of bounds, maybe, because one knee equals two feet. So that's if it in, it's in. And maybe if it's out, the knee was out, so then the feet don't count. They are reviewing once more. Again, if his knee is out, then it doesn't make any difference where his feet are. If that right knee is in, then both feet are in. It looks like to me the knee is on the line. You know, you can see where the divot is. You see that divot? I think the knee made the divot. The play stands as called. Second down. Yeah, I think they're right on that one. Second down. The Patriots improve their record to six and five as they beat the Jets. Indianapolis over Green Bay. Denver leading Cleveland in the first. And the Cardinals have gone ahead of the Giants. Seven up. Ripping. Picked off by David Tate. He's going to get it for Clark. Five times the Redskin quarterbacks have been picked off today. Five interceptions. I think that happened. I mean, the, the, the Bears got ahead early. Then their defense could take over. And then 
the Redskins had to force things, had to try and make something happen, and it's, it's been that kind of day. The Bears have been up on top, and they've played downhill. The Redskins have been down on bottom, and they've been playing uphill all day. Redskins have been unable to generate any sort of running attack, which they felt was very much a key. They just haven't been able to do anything. And now the Bears can run it out. Redskins down to one timeout. Muster over the left side. Flag on the play. Hot bowls on the stop. Muster got two. Joe Gibbs was saying yesterday, what a good job the Bears have done in drafting and rebuilding while maintaining a stature up at the top. In fact, Gibbs said, we love that guy going into the draft, that muster, who was their first-round draft choice. Well, that's what he thinks, that they've done such a, a, a good job of losing players and then replacing those players and staying on top. And That is not a charge timeout to Washington. Buck was stopped for the penalty. Washington has one timeout left. Well, I think that's a lot of the players that are involved. I think a lot of it is the organization. And I think a whole heck of a lot of it is Mike Ditka. And, uh, you know, bringing players in that are like him, that have that spirit, that have that, that toughness. I mean, these guys are all tough guys. They're all into the game. They're all emotional. They all love this thing, this game of football. And I think it all starts from him and goes out. I really do. I think this guy, Greg Landry, is helping his play calling. Neil Anderson is the lone setback now with Harbaugh, the quarterback. And hand off this to Anderson. And he is hit by Mel Kaufman. And stops for no game. Redskins used their last timeout. Vince Tobin. You have to admire him, too. Very, very cool and confident in the meeting last night that we had with him. Well, you know, he's had a, a tough job because it, he's had a lot of visibility in his job. When he came in, he replaced Buddy uh, 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 Buddy Ryan as the defensive coordinator. And Buddy was such a popular guy, and everyone kind of got on Tobin. And, and last year, they thought Buddy's defense was better. This year, they've come to think that this is Tobin's team now. This is Tobin's defense. And, and they have those great numbers, and I think that, that he deserves a lot of that credit for, for hanging in there early, weathering it, and then coming out the other end on top. Well, he's had some key, key guys on that defensive unit. The front four, Al Harris and Richard Dent and Hampton and McMichael. He's had Singletary and Durison in the middle, the heart of the defense. Yeah, but he still lost a guy like Wilbur Marshall, yeah. Otis Wilson out for the year, Gary Fensick retires. Going deep for Morris, who has it. That puts it at the Redskin 35. Daryl Green stopped Morris, and it may be Daryl Green who's down again. I wonder who called that play, Pat. There it is, third down, they're running the clock, and someone says, hey, Harbaugh, throw a bomb to Morris. They said, okay, hey, Morris, get on green and outrun him. You know, you would think that they'd just be down there running out the clock. I wonder if that was Greg Landry's call, Mike Har Ditka's call, or Harbaugh's, Harbaugh's call. call. There's Darrell Green down. Let's see what happened to Mike Ditka, his reaction. Well, at least he knows it's going. Look at him watch it. Now, don't get excited. Don't get emotional. He's learned that. Look at that. <laughs> He's getting more involved, though, as the game has gone on. Oh, yeah. he started, he was looking over Landry's shoulder. And for the most of the first half, he sat on the bench. Then in the second half, he took the sweater off. And now he keeps getting closer and closer on that sideline. And the gum continues to get a workout. I think part of Daryl Green was in the tackle, and part was Alvin Walton. Watch as Walton comes in, Green is tackling Morris, and Walton is tackling Green. 
I think it was a combination of getting his leg caught up under in the tackle with Morris in front of him and Walton on top of him. He got it jammed into the ground. Again, a reminder, next Saturday, a big double hitter here on CBS, Penn State against number one, Frank Notre Dame, the Fighting Irish, headed for a bowl somewhere. That'll be followed by the big game in the Big Eight. Nebraska against Oklahoma. That's at 3.30 Eastern time. Those two next week here on CBS. 34 to 14 at RFK Stadium here in Washington. Daryl Green, who's been bothered by a bad knee throughout the year, hasn't been able to rest it, hasn't been able to have anything done about it because he had to keep playing. While Darrell is being helped off, we can take a look at some of the other standings and the AFC West, for example. Denver at five and five, the Raiders five and five, Seattle five and five. Matt Millen of the Raiders, when he looked at those standings, says, don't pay any attention to that. We all stink. That's what he said. And then he said, we being the Raiders, he said, I hope at the end of the season, we stink less than the rest of them stink. Cincinnati lost today. Houston's winning. They're playing. Cincinnati's record now eight and three. And Houston can tie up. Cleveland playing Denver. Yeah, we saw Houston. on uh, remember a week ago when they brought right. the Redskins. We saw the coaching films. And, and I saw them against Cleveland. I think they're one of the best teams in the league. They're certainly one of the more aggressive. Buffalo with the best record in football. Darrell Green now over on the sideline. Bear first down. Redskins now out of timeouts. And the Bears should be able to just run it out. Although after that last call, you never know. Denver up on Cleveland 10-0. Harbaugh kneels and gets rid of it. And that should do it. So the final score is the Chicago Bears 34, the Washington Redskins 14. Stay tuned for the NFL Today postgame show coming up next. You've been watching CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League. Electroblade vibrating blade system has been an amazing success for those who prefer shaving with a blade. Electroblade's vibrating twin blades glide so easily you'll get the closest, smoothest blade shave you've ever imagined or your money back. How fast does Dristan nasal spray start to work? Faster than Dolly can pick up a five dollar tip. Dristan works fast to relieve nasal congestion, even sinus pressure. For relief, faster than a frog on a hot rock. Try Dristan nasal spray. It's faster than United Airlines, from the ground up, rededicated to giving you the service you deserve. Come fly the friendly skies. College football doesn't get any better than this. Penn State collides with top-ranked Notre Dame. Then the battle for the Big Eight, Nebraska, Oklahoma. A blockbuster doubleheader next Saturday on CBS Sports. The NFL Today Post Game Show is sponsored by Miller Lite, official sponsor of the Miller Lite NFL Lineman of the Year Award. Once again, Brent Musburger. And welcome back to New York, everybody, with Dick Buckus and Irv Cross. Uh, let's quickly take a look at the score that really holds so much importance now for Washington Redskins fans 
and everybody in the NFC East. The Giants trailed the Cardinals at 7-0. We'll keep you up to date. This was the final score down in RFK. You just watched this game, 34-14. Mike Tomczak had a great afternoon. And let's send you back to Pat Summerall. Pat? All right, Brent, and first of all, Mike Tomczak, congratulations. It was a heck of an afternoon. It was a fun afternoon, and we put two weeks in a row back to back, and you, you love the game of football, especially when you're winning and having fun out there, and that's the important thing. You know, Mike, I know last night talking to you, you said a couple things. One, that you had to be patient, and two, you had to take some shots at a big one, and you looked like you were successful in both of those things. We sure were, and that's not a high percentage pass for us or any team in the NFL, but we made some great catches out there, and they protected me at outstandingly today and uh, some big plays that definitely win a ball game for you. Mike, uh, your relationship with your head coach Mike Ditka has been so widely publicized. What was it like on the sideline today with Mike Ditka? He was real quiet. Uh, I didn't notice him on the sideline until in the second quarter I saw him sitting down on the bench over there and I guess the heat was getting to him but uh, the doctors told me he, he had a little flash out there but hey we know one thing we have 47 guys in this team we just play hard and we play for ourselves and that's an important thing. Well, all we can say is uh, what looks like down the road for you doesn't look that difficult. But your schedule, sometimes when you get in a situation where it looks comfortable, that doesn't necessarily work out, does it? You're exactly right, Dan. We can't relax at all. Any given Sunday, any team could beat anybody in this league, and especially uh, we have to look out for our next couple of opponents. Tampa Bay, and we go to Green, Green Bay comes and plays us, and then we go up to a Monday night game in Los Angeles. Well, we offer our congratulations to you. Thanks very much, Mike. Hey, it was fun. I enjoyed it. Thank you. All right, Pat, thank you very much. The St. Louis, Louis, I knew I was going to do that before the year was over. The Phoenix Cardinals have driven down to the six-yard line. But, Dick, back to the Bears now. Very much in the driver's seat in the NFC Central? In the Central, I think so. I, I think they can go over the last five games. If they lose two, they can still win it. Uh, the thing about the Skins, that's why we mentioned earlier in the pregame show about the Giants, that I felt they, the Giants had a lock, is because of the tremendous schedule that the Skins have to play. I think the Cardinals are going to be more important in this race than the, than the Redskins. Yeah, I, I agree with that you. schedule. I tell you, you're Brent, um, uh, Joe Gibbs calls their remaining schedule murderer's row. Listen to this. They go away to San Francisco next weekend. Then they have Cleveland at home. They go to Philadelphia. Then they have Dallas, which, you know, never really hot that year. And they finish up with Cincinnati in, Cincinnati in Cincinnati. So they could lose all five of the remaining games. All right. Well, we're going to come back and talk about the Philadelphia Eagles because they pulled one out of the fire. And we'll have that story when we continue in just a moment. The Great American Torture Test, Alaska. Zero. Death Valley. Zero. City traffic. Zero. Coast to coast to prove under the most extreme conditions you can't buy a better antifreeze coolant than Xerox. No matter where you drive. When we played for Oakland, we did not appreciate losing. Our motto was, just win, baby. Yeah, but now we just like to play a quiet game of pool and drink a few cold Miller Lights. Lights brewed from the ground up so it tastes great. Not like some watered-down version of a regular beer. Your turn, Otis. Hey, you cheated. So? So a uh, nice shot. <laughs> when it's Miller Light, less filling tastes great. Still big doings around here when the new models come in. Folks will be coming into my showroom. Make sure we've got what they're after. We listened long and hard. Put together just the cars they said they wanted. Word will get around pretty fast. Always does when it's good news. GM dealers achieved higher customer satisfaction than any other U.S. automaker, according to a 1988 study by an independent research firm. College football doesn't get any better than this. The tradition-rich power of Penn State. Can Paterno rally his Nittany Lions to upset the top-ranked team in the nation? The undefeated Irish of Notre Dame. Then, the battle for the Big Eight. Nebraska collides with Oklahoma. From pre-game through post-game, you'll know because they know. A blockbuster doubleheader next Saturday on CBS Sports. 
down in Arizona, the Cardinals strike again, and now they lead the Giants by two touchdowns, 14-0. This is how it unfolded, and Dick, your impressions of Neil Lomax. Well, I think he's having a great year, and the funny thing, against the Giants, he always has a good game. I mean, there's no problem, it seems, for the Cardinals not to score points. It's always their defense that they've got to worry about. And here was the touchdown pass. Lomax, they walled is in for the score, and it is a two-touchdown difference right now. Okay, Irv, we mentioned the Eagles-Pittsburgh. Eagles pulling it out in the closing moments of their game in the Steel City, 27 to 26. Bubby Brister had a great moment for Chuck Noll in that game. He went 89 yards to Lewis Lips, and that almost equaled Terry Bradshaw's longest ever in Steeler history. He went 90 yards to Mark Malone. Lips had a big afternoon. Or... This has been the Eagles' problem all year long, Brett. Their defense does a pretty good job for three quarters or so, and all of a sudden, bang, they give up a home run. Dick, is there a better running quarterback in all of football than Randall Cunningham? I don't think so. I'll tell you what, that's talking to the people at Pittsburgh this week. That was one of their concerns. The guy can throw, and he can really hurt you running the ball, and he did today. Here he is throwing to set up the winning field goal. It'll be Chris Carter. Look at him on the move. What a cannon he's got. And they kick the field goal to win it, and so the Eagles keep their playoff hopes at least alive with that triumph. Now, the upset of the day. Tony, the stage manager, where have you been all my life? 31 to 28, Chiefs over the Bengals. Would you believe this one, folks? The Boomer, Esiason. I mean, watch this run. He makes like a fullback here, Mr. Butchers. Look at him. running around, stops, wait, oh, stop, look, oh, and nope. Get around, the guy with a go. <laughs> goes in finally puts that ball over the goal line sam white says that's just like i told yeah, good normal. coaching and look uh, i tell you the chiefs came back and again cincinnati had the response here he comes stanford jennings breaks it and he'll go the distance on the kickoff and again Irv, they were in control 28 to 16. brent the Bengals have been playing great football all year long the highest scoring team league here's here goes kansas city with their sc score Getting now, back in the ballgame. Now, this is the play that turned the game around. On the kickoff after the Akoya touchdown, they fumble the kickoff, they recover. Now, what about Nick Lowry, Irv? Well, with Nick Lowry, Lowry, that kick's automatic. He's one of the best kickers in the league, that's all. He'll go down in NFL history. He's one of the greatest. How about that for a day? Five for five, and the upset comes through. All right, New England and the Jets now. Let's take a look at that one. The Patriots and Doug Flutie win. Nasty weather conditions over in the Meadowlands. Here's O'Brien, and he is intercepted by McGrew. And he gets to the Jet 18-yard line, and Joe Walton over there on the sideline, not very happy. You know, Dick, you got to give Flutie a lot of credit. He just gets the job done. Come on, you've seen it every week. Although you're right, <laughs> he gets it done every week. That's the funny thing. I'm waiting for him to lay an egg, and he hasn't done it yet. This time he gives it to John Stevens, an impressive rookie running back. He gets it in, and Flutie and the Patriots win it again, 14-13. Indianapolis and Green Bay. The final there was 20-13. And uh, one of the fans uh, smuggled in this bird. <laughs> what do you think, Dick? Is that a reflection on how they're playing in Green Bay? You know, they used to play on Thanksgiving. You know, Green Bay and they they Detroit all the time. Yeah, maybe they want to they get back on Turkey Day or something. I don't know. That was Chandler, one of his touchdown passes. He had a big afternoon. Irv, what about Chandler? Chandler has a strong arm. He's a good runner, too, as well. But here he's delivered this ball for a touchdown pass to Mark Boyer. Good young quarterback. I think he threw for about 200 yards in that game this afternoon. That's a big-time day for him. Tampa Bay, Igwe Buike, one of the best field goal kickers in the business. He pulls this one out in the waning moments. Smallest crowd ever, right? In the history of Pontiac Stadium to watch the Lions? Well, they got their money's worth. Vinny Testaverde sacked here by Griffin, and Vinny Blades, the rookie, pounces on the loose ball. Then Robert Goff, well, he'll pick up a rusty Pilger lateral, and he recovers this one. Uh, everybody, go get it. Yeah. <laughs> go get it. <laughs> you ever see it the way I thought, he reacted? I thought maybe he was just like kind of sneaking over there like no one sees him. <laughs> <laughs> it was a nice pass, sir, by Hilger to James. Right on the target here, because Hilger is one of these real confident guys. He feels he can get the home run any time he needs it. But uh, Igwe Buike comes in and puts the mm. lid on it right here for Tampa Bay. 52-yard field goal to win it, 23-20. to 20. The Buccaneers put one in the W column. San Diego and Atlanta, I was sure surprised by this one. I thought the Falcons would do some business at home, but they didn't. The Chargers were all over them today. 10-7 was the final. Let me quickly run through these scores of working games. Saints and Rams, no score in that one. Tough defensive game. And how about the Raiders and 49ers? Likewise there. Cleveland and Denver, how about the Broncos? An underdog at home for the first time in about three years, and they lead it 10-0 over the Browns. Houston and Seattle, the Seahawks have tied it up 7-0, and we'll continue with the NFL Today postgame show in just a moment.
your life with Emerson. Oh, look at this. Priceless. Naturally. It's Mom and Dad's 50th wedding anniversary. Here we go. Oh, wait. I'm going to charge it with the American Express card. That way it's automatically insured. Hi. Did you get it? Hi, Mom. You won't believe it. Don't worry. Remember, I used the American Express card. So it's insured. Lost, stolen, or damaged. A way to protect the things you buy. Membership has its privileges. Pure. Genuine. Never heat pasteurized. A beer that's made unlike any other. Cold filtered to give you the rich, smooth taste of real draft beer. That's the mark of a great beer. Cold filtered Miller Genuine Draft. It's as real as it gets. Buffalo Bills who play in Miami tomorrow night have the best record in the league, 9-1. and one. They've been winning mainly on defense. And earlier today, I talked to their star linebacker, Cornelius Bennett, and asked him just how good that Bills defense really is. You know, we're, we're playing pretty good right now, Brandon. Um, we still have a lot of improving to do, but we have a lot of guys that, um, you know, that come from, come from winning backgrounds and colleges for us, me, Shane Conlon, and some of the other guys on the team. And we're just guys, and that's the only thing we know how to do is win. Cornelius, the issue has arisen regarding taunting. Has the coaching staff said anything to you and Bruce Smith uh, regarding what happened out in Seattle last week? Well, you know, the only thing, um, you know, we realized it ourselves that, um, you know, guys um, probably start taking cheap shots at, at us, you know, because of what we're doing. And uh, after the Green Bay game, I had some problems with it also. So I told, you know, told the coaches uh, that, you know, I you know, I'll no longer do it as far as um, going to the extinct of pouring, you know, pouring toward the uh, other team's bench. During the Green Bay game, I did it, but the only reason I did it, Brent, was because I had a teammate from college, Al Bell, on the sideline with Green Bay at the time. And um, I had talked to him the night before the game, and I told him, you know, that, um, you know, that I'd be looking for him on the sideline. So uh, it was all doing, you know, all did in fun when I did it. So the, uh, the Fred Sanford dance is dead as far as Cornelius Bennett is concerned. Well, you know, I might sneak it in every now and then, Brent, but, um, you know, I have to watch myself because I don't want guys going, going after my knees or whatever. Dick, your feeling about Tommy? I don't, I don't go for it, Brent. It's just, uh, if you want to get somebody you can talk under your mask and no one needs to know about it, you don't have to go around making all these motions to get in the crowd involved. And like he said, you're going to get the other teams starting to do some chop blocking and going after you. I'm a little nervous that uh, dance is uh, kind of good showbiz. Well, no, Brent. I think it's a fine line between professionalism and showboating. You know, you don't need those extraneous uh, activities. If it happens as a team, that's fine. Everybody goes in the end zone, congratulates the player, great. But that individual stuff is hope to do it. Oh, no. no. <laughs> you know, this Saturday, uh, Dick and Irv, we've got a great college doubleheader coming your way on CBS. Starts with Penn State at number one Notre Dame. Followed by the Battle for the Orange Bowl between Nebraska and Oklahoma. One Nebraska player has been involved in a very amusing mix-up of names. The Cornhuskers are led by All-American linebacker Broderick Thomas, sure to be a first-round NFL draft choice. But out in Nebraska, there's another fine, young, very young football player by the name of Thomas Broderick. And the 12-year-old has been receiving all sorts of tempting offers mailed by eager agents in this clear-cut case of a mistaken identity. At long last, it was time for Broderick and Thomas to meet. This is Broderick. Thomas Broderick, right? Yes. Some mail from? Yes. <laughs> love letters, I heard. No, no love letters. Just a little playbook. Hey, I appreciate that. Nice to meet you. I've been hearing about you. Everybody knows me. Never, they'll never forget my name. In fact, Thomas will keep a permanent souvenir of this episode, an autograph that may increase in value, especially if the Huskers can beat the Sooners on Saturday afternoon in Norman. Now, your uh, Dick Buckus never had to worry about that. There's only one name <laughs> for a linebacker. Listen, there's so many of you have asked, what about the little Mississippi High School? You, you remember the storyline? They took a deliberate safety or ran the wrong way for 60 yards to advance to the next round. Well, as you can see on Friday night, unfortunately for Coach Herbert, they could not pull it out against Anguilla. So next year, better luck for the Bulldogs. Tishomingo, a loser. And we will continue by sending you back to Pat Summerall and John Madden and RFK. That wraps it up for Dick and Irv and me in New York. We hope you've enjoyed the NFL today. So long, everybody.